Yeah. Yeah. Been that dude, so they all better take heed. Money. Got the haters going ghost, like they Patrick Swayze. I've been talking real shit, y'all been talking crazy. I've been on some new shit, y'all been acting lazy. I've been it, so my words are gonna make you float. I'm like dry ice mixed with alcohol in a bowl. Or a below zero winter, go and grab a coat. What else can I say? The kid is just too cold. Never told a fib, was born just too bold. Never had to fold, but did break the mold. And as the story's told, if you didn't know, I'm running up the scope. This is DMO. Can you hear me? The some of been minds, man, they better fear me. They need glasses, they can't see it clearly. I don't chase the money, it just like to come near me. Yearly, truly, my life is a movie. Took her on a date once, now she tryna groove me. I'm really that guy, they gon' have to sue me. Then had the juice, time to mix it like a smoothie. Groovy, they asked me how I get up, I told them had to start down. Found me some real ones, now I got a crew now. Met a loyal girl four years later, that's my boo wow. And now I'm out here giving new sounds like boom pow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Haven, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, right, right out of the gate, guys, I do want to apologize. If the quality of the uh, images is kind of going up and down, I, I, I apologize, guys. We are trying to get things set up in my new place uh, with, you know, where we're going to have everything working. But uh, we are still very much figuring out some hicks and switches, and uh, we can't keep fucking uh just keep, keep keep going on with the connection that we have even though we're uh, wired we still have a garbage connection but uh it's it seems to be holding it seems to be holding so uh guys i just want to say it's been a little bit of a hiatus it'll probably continue to be a little bit more of a hiatus until we can get things more figured out um but guys we did want to bring you an episode today so guys that's what we're gonna do Kenny, you obviously have been pulling up all of our uh, news for this week, and guys, we're going to do the news very briefly because we do have some big plans for this episode. We're going to be recapping the top 100 players from the 2024 season, and uh, we're also going to be going over the Hall of Fame class of 2024. All right, guys, um, that's just in addition to our normal segments, but uh, Kenny, why don't you start us off with the news? All right, so Geno Smith returns to practice after it was feared he had some type of knee slash hip injury. He did have tests that came back negative. He is back in practice after a few days of missing uh, such practice. Always good to see players returning back, uh, especially when uh, injuries nowadays are uh, they they can often end careers. And uh, it's nice to see that uh, Geno will not be missing any time due to any injury. Definitely a good news there. Um, next up, we have the Titans uh, signing veteran safety Quandre Diggs to a one-year deal worth only $5 million. Interesting signing by the Titans there. This makes, uh, makes Quandre... This makes Quandre rejoin Jamal Adams. They both played for the Seahawks last year, and they are now both playing for the uh, Titans this year. Yeah, so it'll definitely be interesting. Uh, Quandre Diggs is definitely a talented safety, um, and I'm kind of excited to see what he'll do in Tennessee now. And the newly acquired Legereus Sneed in that Titans secondary, so that's going to be a fun, uh, fun thing to watch. Yeah, enjoying Legereus Sneed, that's, that's definitely going to be fun to watch. Uh, next up, we have the, um, unfortunately, rookie wide receiver Xavier Leggett has has uh, been um, taken out of practice with a lower leg issue. There is no um, there is no update on his current condition. There were X-rays yesterday, but nothing has been has surfaced on the severity of the injury. Well, that's always awful, especially when you hear about these uh, brand new rookies coming into the league. You know. Uh, I'm sure he was very excited to start his uh, NFL career, and uh, you know, he uh, might end up being uh, 
just benched due to an injury due to the due to what happened before the season even starts. You don't you, the guys injuries before the season starts suck either way. But when you're a rookie, I feel like that's gotta suck just a little bit more. Yeah, because your career hasn't started yet. You don't have any bonds with anybody yet. So to, to have to lose time this early is never a good thing. Uh, for those that don't know, this this is something I'm going to specifically say because of what we have uh, consider ourselves as. Quarterback Justin Fields has taken all first-team reps basically throughout training camp and has, and I quote, pushed for the starting job. Uh, guys, me and Kenny have been advocating for Justin Fields ever since he got fucking traded for the from the Bears for tra- for t- able scraps. Which, guys, again, we will be t- I will be touching on this in another segment. We'll be doing in a bit after the news. We'll probably do the five for five, the five for five. And uh, but uh, guys, we are going. Yep. We, we we will be diving a little bit more into that. But uh, like I said, I would like to just point out that uh, we called it. We called it. Uh, we called that Justin Fields would be taking the starting job from Russ. And right now he's very much pushing for it. He's made great work of his reps, and he's actually slinging the ball because he actually has no line in front of him now that isn't yeah, no, there. I, it's machine, crazy. So. It's crazy what, what, what this kid is doing now that he has, you know, actual talent around him. Uh, great new or another... Uh, this isn't a re-signing, it's, more, it's a restructure. However, Dolphins wide right receiver Tyreek Hill has restructured his contract as this gets him 90 mil over the next three seasons, bringing his, with a 65 guarantee, this, you know, the guaranteed money now goes up a lot. However, this is not add years, as he has stated that this is the last contract he wants to play or play under before he retires. However, uh they give him a very well-deserved raise after basically carrying two uh, two on his back for the past two seasons. Well, we will we we will, we will be talking a little bit more about Tyreek a bit later uh, during the top 100 players list because uh, guys, in case you didn't know, spoiler alert: uh, Tyreek Hill was the number one was named the number one player in the NFL by NFL players. And we both have already said privately that we have a lot to say about that one so that's we have a lot to say about a lot of the top 100 a brutal injury here out of arizona offensive or outside linebacker bj ojolari has suffered an acl tear in his left knee he's expected to miss the entirety of the 2024 season that's brutal not the season hasn't even started you're gonna be out for the season Don't Don't. smoke weed every day Necro, we're doing the podcast. Ghost of Tabor 24 verse 12 says, Let us clappeth those cheekiths. Sorry, guys. I have the dogs annoying me a little bit right now. Oh, my goodness. All right. So um, another unfortunate injury news out of Tennessee. Wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins expected to miss several weeks with a knee injury. He well, that there was no surgery, and Fritz says a return is likely in about four weeks, so he might be there for week two, but he will at minimum be missing week one of the NFL season. Well, that's definitely brutal, especially when you're, uh, you know, kind of the whole, whole entirety of your wide receiving core, your team's wide receiving core. I yeah, mean, definitely. A, yeah, I mean, a brutal it's, first I mean, I mean, what? It's, in, it's what? Yeah. DeAndre Hopkins and who? Um, the only one I can name off the top of my head, I don't even think it's there anymore. So yeah, I don't yeah, know. No. That's the Titans wide receiver room, guys. It's DeAndre no, Hopkins and who? Hold on, I just remembered. Um, I think Tyler Boyd to- uh, joined the Titans too. Okay, Tyler Boyd might be solid, but yeah, we'll, 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 it's uh, it's very, very, very shallow there over in uh, Tennessee right now in their wide receiver room. Other potential injury here, this time for Tampa Bay. Young standout linebacker, Yaya Ube. I have no idea who the fuck that is. Who was carved off the field today, was diagnosed with a high ankle sprain. He is expected to miss four to six weeks. So he's probably missing about roughly half the season uh, due to a high ankle sprain. That, that, that's, uh, 
Well, if, it's, if that time frame starts today, then he'll start probably week three or four. But yeah, probably. Lucky, but you know, he's not gonna get any, he's not gonna get any preseason reps. Uh, he, he's gonna he's probably gonna be behind in, in, as far as uh, seasonal development. You and I spoke about this uh, privately already, but the Chargers have announced quarterback Justin Herbert has been diagnosed with an injury to his plantar fasciae. For those that don't know, that is the tendon connecting your uh, your um, heel to your toes. Uh, he is expected to be in a boot for two weeks and will progressively go back into action. Is still expected to play week one. Yeah, that sounds like it. That sounds that's uh, that sounds like it hurts alone, but uh, uh, it's definitely going to be rough for the uh, Chargers starting out the season without their uh, star QB, especially considering that um, the wide receiver room has kind of been emptied for them. Uh, but, uh, that's basically all we have on offense. Yeah, really? That, that is about it. But, um, yeah, definitely. But, you know, at least wh- who's, who's your guy's second string? Easton Stick? Yeah, they got Easton Stick. And there has been some talk that I don't know if it will happen, but there is some talk that the Chargers might trade a seventh round pick over to the team that, that one, uh, Joe Flacco is on to try to, maybe seal that hole if he ends up missing time. Well, you know, at least Easton Stick is, uh, you know, a solid QB2. He's a solid QB2. I, I'm not going to go as far as to say he should be starting anywhere, but he's definitely a, a, a solid QB2, and Easton Stick will also, you know, have all the preseason snaps behind him. So, you know, it could work out. It could work. Yeah, it could work out. I think Easton, if he has to play week one and then he's where past week one, can do enough to keep us from losing games. I don't think he had many turnovers taking over the last couple games last season. So I think as long as he takes care of the football, we still got a chance in some of those early tilts that pretty. But it really, like, once you hit week four, you need Herbert after week four because I think the Chiefs are week four or five, and we kind of need him for those, for yeah. that matchup specifically. Yeah. Um, any other news we got? I'm just looking here. Um, again, guys, for the news, we're trying to that. just stick to the major headlines right now. But again, because we're going to be doing the top 100 players this this segment. Here's a name you'll uh, you'll remember as a Deontay Freeman, a guy that played for you guys, your previous team last year, had had sustained a direct blow to the head and neck, and he was taken to a local medical facility during training camp. Was he ruled with a concussion? Uh, right now, they are. Only, it only says that he is under further um, tests, and by tomorrow there should be news. So if he ends up being good, that'll probably be in the next uh, podcast. Yeah, that you guys, we will have to keep you updated on that. Um, but uh, hope we hope for the best. We uh, definitely don't want to see players going out with concussions, especially this early in the season, before the season is even started. Now, I know we talked off off the books here about not talking about offensive linemen. However, when one of the best is, the, is being talked about, we have to at least bring it up. Uh, Tristan Wirfs has re-signed for a five-year deal worth $140 million. Obviously, a key protector for Baker Mayfield up there in Tampa. I, I would also like to say, you know, I saw Baker Mayfield overall, Madden, the utter disrespect they have for him after the breakout season he had last season in Tampa it, it, it guys like I said it's it's disrespectful it's straight up disrespectful he should be at least like CJ Stroud should be an 84 plus I think Baker should be like an 81 82 yeah probably minimum you can probably push for him being at least an 83 because he did really well last year too. I don't, I wouldn't put him above Stroud, but he'd be right under him, I think. Yeah, no, it, it was an insane for Baker season for Baker Mayfield, and the the utter lack of respect he's been given with his Madden overall rating is utter is it's it's disgusting. Okay, next big news here that we're going to talk about is the. Four-year, $110 million extension worth $82.6 million for one DJ Moore. DJ Moore has been extended with the Bears, guys. I almost wanted to put this in my 5-5, five and five, but uh, I ended up going a slightly different direction, and I will explain that when we get to the 5-5 five and five segment. 
Um, but uh, DJ Moore, obviously a big weapon for uh, Caleb Williams, the uh, hopeful generational quarterback in Chicago. Until you remember that they're the Chicago Bears and nothing good has ever come out of Chicago. <laughs> But, uh, I, guys, yeah. I, I know we give Chicago a lot of shit, and uh, I would like to say, after, now that we are past the Hall of Fame game, um, Bears fans, you're not winning the Super Bowl just because you beat us in the Hall of Fame game. You can calm down now. All right, so big D lineman injury. I didn't think we'd be bringing up much D lineman, but this one's kind of severe as the Lions lose veteran John Kromensky indefinitely with a torn MCL. Ooh. Again, guys, these are all major injuries. This, this is just training camp, guys. Like this is this is this is bad when our injury report is this big before the season even starts. Now, with slightly more positive news here, Cowboys star cornerback Trayvon Diggs has been officially removed from the PUP list. A positive development as he as he recovers from a torn ACL. Definitely positive. Obviously, as much as most you know, people, it's, it's good to see players coming off the pup list, especially when our injury report this week has been a uh, rather big. With a need at safety, the Bills have signed veteran Kareem Jackson to a one-year deal. He is a former Texan and Broncos starter, and he lands on Buffalo at the age of 36. Good signing for Buffalo, in my opinion. You know, he may be a little bit past definitely. his prime, but uh, definitely a solid signing. They're gonna need. They're gonna need to bolster that defense. Uh, Panthers has placed running back Rashard Penny on the reserve list as Rashard Penny did officially retire earlier this week. So we have a retirement. That's I think I think that's our first retirement report for this week. That that indeed it is. It is definitely exactly that. Um, the Falcons are signing veteran wide receiver James Washington. For those that don't know, he was with Pittsburgh for his career up to this point. Washington has. Had a thousand or 114 catches, 1,629 yards, and 11 touchdowns over four years in, in uh, Pittsburgh. Obviously, he was always the uh, wide receiver two or three on that roster. That's pretty impressive numbers for a guy that doesn't get looked at much. Yeah, no, definitely impressive numbers for a wide receiver two or three. And unfortunately, more bad news here. Colts DN Samson Ubu Khan has torn his Achilles and will miss the 2024 season. Oh, man. God, our injury report this week is just stacking up, man. However, some good news also for at least the Lions. I know we weren't going to bring up much uh, linemen, but they did re-sign Taylor Decker, uh, once again a key defender to keep Goff off of his back as they try to become uh, a NFC North champions once more this year. Hell, I think this is all, the Lions are looking for a Super Bowl this year. Well, yeah, obviously, you guys start with, and the, as for the number three, you're sixty million dollars for one of the best tackles in the. World. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's see anything. Oh, another one. Cowboys DN Sam Williams is feared to have torn his ACL as well. Another I, ACL I, tear. Oh my. This one is not quite approved yet, as I there hasn't been an MRI scan for him quite yet. But it is feared that is a uh, ACL tear. That is, that is, this is definitely starting to add up, especially with the ACL tears. That seems to be the uh, popular injury that p players are going down with now. And here's one that will... Uh, I know we don't like the pack, uh, Patriots, but this is kind of a really, really bad one to have to talk about. Patriots star D-tackle Christian Bullmore is dealing with blood clots. He is indefinitely out as of now, and this could potentially mark the end of his career yeah obviously guys again we didn't want to touch on a whole lot of linemen and we there's obviously quite a few we didn't just just you know big names you know some of the best in their position and uh this one was definitely needed to be brought up because uh that's just a health condition that that, that that's not even football related guys and that's definitely sad to see uh we're hoping that he can recover and you know get back to playing the sport that he loves to play but uh Having having a health condition that ha that could potentially spell the end of your career is definitely scary. 
put it into perspective, guys, Barmore is only 24 years old, so he has a lot of career left, and it'll suck to see it if it's cut short like that. Uh, Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford have agreed to a term in terms of adjusted contract. Source says he gets an additional $5 million this year, moving money forward to latter contracts as well, and an additional $4 million guaranteed roster bonus next year. Well, it looks like there's definitely strapping in for Stafford to be the long-haul quarterback. That, it appears they are. Um, definitely. I don't know how I feel about that, considering that Stafford's getting up there in age now. Okay, yeah, I mean, that makes sense, but at the same time, you don't got nothing behind him, and you know next year there isn't a lot of quarterbacks to try to grab. I guess that's also either, true, so. yeah. No, you, you, make a, you make an excellent point there. I mean, the, the chances of you finding the next Brock Purdy are slim to none. Exactly. Um, next up, we have one. Let me see if I can find the next one we're going to talk about here. Okay, so um, obviously we have the Packers striking a deal with Jordan Love, four-year extension worth $220 million. That is an extension to stick with the Packers. After a half a season of playing good football. And again, guys, we're going to be touching a little bit more on Jordan Love during the 5-5, five and five, and we will also be dissecting him during the uh, player spotlight this week. So, guys, stick around. Stick around, Packers fans, because uh, we have some excellent points that we want to prove to you and bring bring to your attention on july 26th i think we're about we're about to where we last left off on a podcast here yeah, that sounds about the rams right. have officially played oh, rams have officially placed legend aaron donald on the retired list he is officially done with the nfl as soon as he hits that list so i mean obviously we touched base on him earlier you know in a few episodes ago but Obviously, one of the best to ever do it. Not much else we need to say about it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We've touched on him before on the podcast, guys. Uh, amazing career out of Aaron Donald, and uh, we wish him the best in retirement. Obviously, the Dolphins have inked starter quarterback to uh, turn the ball over to a $167.1 million contract over the next four years. And that, I think, Another guy I think that, that I... brings us to about where we left off, though. I'm doing a real quick look just to make sure there's nothing left here that's worth talking about. Here's one that we did not talk about, I know for a fact. The Patriots and Safety Jabril Peppers have signed a three-year contract for $24 million. Well, good for good for Jabril Peppers. We, 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 got, we got another payday, and, guys. We got another payday. News here as... Even though kickers are not that big of a deal to most people, they are still a big deal when they when it comes to sealing games. Michael Badgley for the Lions has, has suffered an injury, and he will be out for the remainder of the season as well. So who's going to be kicking in Detroit then? Uh, I don't know. I have not found anything about them signing a new kicker for sure yet. They're, they might be working out a few and haven't signed one. Yeah, so. we'll probably have to keep you all posted yet, on that story as well. And it looks like that. Oh wait, one more signing. Wide receiver Cord or Cortland Sutton has signed a fifteen point two million dollar contract. Actually, no, he restructured his contract to get fifteen point two million dollars this season, including one point five million in incentives. As one of the few um, actually good players on that Broncos uh, wide receiving core at the moment. Do we have any word on what um, his incentives are for his it, contract? Who? Do we have any word on what his incentives are for the contract? Uh, I don't believe they have anything on this one. Um, I'm assuming it's probably going to have to do with yardage or touchdowns. Likely. Um, two more here. Two more, and then we did hit where I liked the tweet, so I know this was these last two. You are the last ones that happened from when we last set a podcast. All right. uh, Vikings cornerback Makai Blackman suffered a also suffered a torn ACL as he will also miss all of all of this upcoming season. Man, another torn ACL? How many is that on this report alone? It's got to well, be so what, far, like the third been... or fourth. 
Yeah, I think three or four ACLs, two MCLs, and an Achilles is the exact Brutal. thing. Brutal. Brutal. Last update here, uh, DB Julian Love has re-signed with Seattle, signing a three-year, $36 million contract. Well, we got another payday, guys, and that, guys, will bring us to the end of the news. Well, guys, obviously yep, that not, the, not the uh, funnest report for the news this week. Obviously, a lot of injuries. Uh, we don't we don't like seeing players go down uh, before the season starts. But uh, again, guys, it's training camp. These guys have been off for months. It's uh, time to get them back in shape. And uh, the, I guess uh, at this point, it's just you know part of football. But uh, definitely don't want to be seeing players go down like that before the season starts. But guys. Uh, this this brings us to our next segment, and it's something a little bit new, something we we have we have not done before. Um, Kenny have, uh, Kenny and I have both created our own five and five list. So guys, we are going to give you our five best moves of the off season and our five worst moves of the off season. Thus, why I named this episode Fifth Down Conversions. So, uh, Kenny, do you want do you want to tell me what your what, what, what do you want to st- how you, first off I guess how you want to do this do you want to do this best worst best worst all best first all worst first uh we're gonna go with all best first and a disclaimer to those I'm gonna let uh, him do his best first as I talked to him already he already knows I'm going for more underrated than the obvious choices here for the most part so you can start with uh, your top five. All right. So since I'm going to go first, I'm actually going to do this in a best, worst, best, worst order, right? So uh, okay. fifth, fifth best move of the offseason, in my opinion. Texans sign Stephon Diggs. Obviously adding another layer to that, uh, to that uh, wide receiving core there and adds that veteran leadership as well. Yeah, no, obviously, guys, uh, the, the, the Texans wide receiver room was looking pretty damn good before with t- with Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Uh, you throw in uh, Stephon Diggs into that mix, a veteran with years of experience who, quite frankly, is quite frankly probably still at the top of his game. Uh, hasn't hasn't seen we haven't seen much drop off from from Diggs in the last few years. So uh who knows? Who knows? Is this going to be, are we going to get, you know, is this finally going to be the year that Diggs shows his age? Or, you know, is he just as good as advertised? So, uh, guys, right now I've got that as my fifth best. Like I said, I think that's a fantastic sign for the Texans. This is a young team looking to compete for a title this year. And, I, and I, again, guys, I touched on it last episode. The Houston Texans are going to win the AFC this year. All right, so uh, that brings me to my uh, fifth worst move of the year. The Falcons drafting a quarterback. Yeah, definitely uh, feels like a waste of a first rounder there, especially with the signing of Kirk. If you would have signed a lesser name to a smaller contract, that would have made more sense. But at this point, it's like, yeah, that's no, a wasted like, You pick. guys now had Kirk could... Cousins, and we all thought you guys were going to be okay. What's the deal with Michael Penix? He's not going to fucking see the field until he's like 30. So yeah. yeah, his career will basically be over before he even plays a snap. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and it, it, it's really sad to see. So Falcons, you unfortunately have been placed on my fifth worst move of the offseason to date. Now, guys, moving on to the fourth best I have for this offseason, I have the Eagles signing Saquon Barkley. The quad god. <laughs> the quad god. Saquon, I have tree trunks for legs, Barkley. Uh, guys, very, very big signing for the Saquon. Eagles. Obviously, they got him from division rival New York Giants. Um, so that's definitely going to screw with the Giants' uh, psyche, considering that the, that was probably the best player on the Giants' offense. So uh, definitely a huge addition for Philadelphia there, signing Saquon Barkley to a big contract. Uh, but that will bring me to my fourth worst move of the offseason. And guys, again, we touched on this a little bit earlier. I have the Bears trading Justin Fields for atten- essentially what was table scraps. Yeah, Fields should have been um, 
trade it for at least a third, I think, because he still has a lot of upside. You know, guys, um, guys, I feel like the promise that Fields has been showing in Steelers training camp just goes to show that everyone that doubted this kid was absolutely wrong. And uh, when he when he inevitably does become the QB one in Pittsburgh, guys, I don't want to hear anyone that was dissing Justin Fields going, "Oh my God, oh my God, this kid's amazing." Because no, no, look what look what he did with the Bears. Oh no, he was so bad. He was so bad, even though he didn't have a single fucking player worth an ounce of fucking talent around him. Oh no. It's Aside almost like you have to have players. It's team almost team. like your players have to have talent in order for you to succeed in the NFL. Who would have guessed that? So, yeah, I mean, all he had was DJ Moore for a season and Cole Komet, and that was about it. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, that's uh, my fifth dumbest move of the offseason. Bears, you could have kept Justin Fields. You could have drafted Marvin Harrison Jr., and you could have had an absolute gem of a team. There was no reason to restart the rebuild. But uh, that brings me to my third best signing. Third best move of the offseason, I should say. Because the next one is not, not isn't necessarily a signing. But I have the Packers signing Josh Jacobs. Now, I know a lot of people were kind of on the fence about this. But in my opinion, guys, Josh going from Aaron Jones to Josh Jacobs is an upgrade. Massive upgrade at that. Like, I, I'm not saying that Aaron Jones is a bad running back, guys. I, as a matter of fact, Aaron Jones is a very, very talented running back, and I think he's going to I think he's gonna get, be getting a lot of carries in Minnesota considering that they don't really have a backfield anymore. But um, but Josh, but going from him to Josh Jacobs, like, come on. Josh Jacobs has been one of the best backs in the league for quite a few seasons now. Anyway, moving on to my third worst move of the offseason and uh this one isn't even necessarily a move because my third worst move of the offseason is the cowboys doing absolutely fucking nothing <laughs> can you keep them busy for a moment i gotta go see what the dogs want all right obviously cowboys doing nothing um uh, well, they didn't do anything until, like, super recent, and then they finally did something, but even that something wasn't really that much. I mean, they added something that I guess they might have needed, which is a little bit of depth, but they didn't add any star power, really, to their roster. No, Ezekiel Elliott does not fucking star power. For those that think that he is, it's not 2016 anymore. Let's not act like it is. Um... I think they signed Eric Hendricks back from uh, from the Chargers, but even that, it's like you're replacing Leighton Van Der Esch with him, and there there's definitely a level above for, for Van Der Esch when he was healthy. But Eric Hendricks obviously still isn't a bad option, but you didn't get better at that position, so. So I mean, yeah, guys. Uh, that, uh, obviously, are... thank you, Kenny, for uh, for elaborating on that point a little bit. I just had to go and grab the dog because this one is shaking, and uh, he is, he's not happy right now. But uh, guys, that brings me to my uh, second best move of the off season. And guys, this one isn't is is the one I sort of t t touched on, not being necessarily a signing, but I have the Vikings extending Justin Jefferson. Obviously, one of the most talented wide receivers in the NFL to the day. Obviously, there, there's not really a debate there. He is almost everybody's one, and if he's not their one, he's their two. So, Yeah, very talented wide receiver. Um, probably one of the best in the game today. Um, that is my second best move of the offseason. That brings me, of course, to my second worst move of the offseason. And guys, this one, I, I kind of feel like it would have almost gone on Kenny's list because I feel like this one kind of flies under the radar a little bit. But uh, I have the Browns not extending Flacco and rolling with Deshaun Watson. Yeah, that almost would have been on my list. But uh, obviously, I want to make sure there's some variety here, but 
De- definitely that would have been probably number like one or two if I had kept it. Yeah, like I said, I have that as my second worst for uh, for this offseason. So, uh, Joe Flacco, guys, incredible season last year. Again, signed off of his couch and uh, played amazing for the Browns. So, uh, you know, yeah. V- very, Basically very poor judgment the by the Browns. To the playoffs. Anyway, that brings obviously me to... Obviously carried uh, the Browns to the playoffs. Yeah, obviously. Uh, anyway, that brings me to my number one best move of the offseason. The absolute best move of this offseason, in my, in my opinion, has been the Ravens signing Derrick Henry. Guys, this is a massive, massive upgrade for that Ravens backfield. Guys, imagine b- being a defensive player, right? And not only having to worry about Lamar, but now you also have to worry about King Henry. Yeah, he's, that's a terrifying backfield. I mean, we've already seen Derrick Henry shove grown man souls out of their fucking body. <laughs> yeah, no, it's absolutely terrifying to think about. And uh, yeah, we definitely are go- going to be uh, excited to see what Derrick Henry can cook up. Along with that off with that offense of the Ravens, um, guys, that of course will bring me to my final move, my worst move of this off season, guys. I, again, guys, a lot. I'm probably gonna catch a lot of flack for this one, guys. I, I'm just gonna throw that out there. But uh, guys, I have the Packers overpaying Jordan Love. I'm sorry, guys. I understand Packer fans that you guys are very high and mighty on this guy because. Oh, we made the playoffs. Oh, we beat the Cowboys. When do you guys not do that? Right? Um, You guys barely scraped yourselves into the playoffs by fucking joke of a fucking playoff ruling. Um, You were literally the joke seed, and then you got the Cowboys in the first round. Whoopty fucking do. You beat the fucking Cowboys. Now, if you guys had managed to beat San Francisco... Maybe I'd have, be, I'd have been a little bit more impressed. But whoop de fucking do You beat the Cowboys. Yeah, not really that impressive considering the past with the Cowboys and playoff games. So, guys, that is, that is the conclusion of my 5 for 5. Um, just I, I kind of wanted to do that in, in that order just for a reason, just because I felt like that'd be a little bit more fun. But, Kenny, let's jump into your 5 for 5. Okay, so obviously, as I said, mine's going to be taking a different route with the best and worst signings, just so there's different names on both of our lists. So I'm going to start with the fifth best acquisition, and to me, it's Spencer Rattler going to New Orleans. Obviously, New Orleans has um, Derek Carr right now, but Derek Carr, we all know what he is. He ain't great. He ain't good. He's okay at best. He's serviceable. Obviously, he's also a lot older than Rattler. He's a lot older than Rattler, and Rattler's already been performing very well in training camp. So, I feel like that's a good fifth, uh, pers- you know, fifth spot right there. I can definitely agree. Number with that. four will be, number four will be a little biased by me, but I have good reasoning for it. Uh, Joe Alt being uh, drafted in the first round by my Chargers. For those that are wondering why it's in my top five when we didn't draft a receiver. We drafted Ladd McConkey. That's just a younger white version of Keenan Allen from what I've seen. His route running is fr- it's literally up there with Keenan Allen already. Joe Alt makes it to where the worst position on the O-line being right tackle over the last few seasons. That's solved. We, you know, Herbert doesn't have to get hit by the right side literally on every single drop back that it feels like in certain games. So solidifying both tackles is definitely going to be key to keeping whoever snaps for us starting starting the year, and then obviously Herbert for the remainder of it on their feet, not on their backs. Yeah, no, definitely. I I, I can find I definitely find that one to be a little bit a little bit interesting, and like you said, a little bit under the radar move uh, here for uh, for the um, Chargers. Number three is Geno Stone signing with Cincinnati. For those of you that don't know, he was in Baltimore last year. That's part of the reason why this signing's a pretty good one to me. But also, he was one of the leaders in interceptions last year. And in terms of passing, he's not like Trayvon Diggs and a few other ones that are like 
really bad at coverage. He's a safety for one, so he doesn't really have to cover. But uh, throwing percentage-wise and quarterback ratings were very low when throwing at him. And taking him away from a division rival is just the cherry on on top, in my opinion. You are definitely doing a good job of doing these under the radar. So for number two, these are are things I I wouldn't have even thought about. This is one of the more... This one's going to be more of a practical one, but it's lower than, like, Justin Jefferson and some of these other guys. But this is 2A and 2B because I couldn't decide between these two who should take two, and there's something that is better, so I did 2A, 2B. I hope that's okay. Um, But I think the Eagles re-signing both their wide receiver one and two is definitely a really good move by them. Oh, definitely, definitely. I, that, I'm not going to lie. That one was almost on my list. And that oh, that is why I put them at two. I feel like looking at your list, I had a feeling that that just missed the list. Yeah, it so just like, missed it. I wanted to put it down at five, but then I thought about it, and I'm like, I got to go with Stephon Diggs going to the Texans. I'm sorry. You got three dangerous, dangerous receivers in Houston now. And then number one, I think number one's probably going to be something that people would not expect me to really use as a good signing slash, you know, addition in general. But I, I think the best move of this offseason has been the also the uh, the Lions here there this is pretty much the best thing they could have done. A complete overhaul of their cornerback group. Well, the Lions, uh, the secondary Lions was were, definitely lacking last year, so definitely a good move on their part. The Lions had one of the worst secondaries in the NFL, minus like one player. They went out and drafted two, traded for one, signed one. Excellent moves by they the revamped Lions. That, they revamped their weakest spot on, on that rock. Now let's go to worst moves of the of the um, off season, in my opinion. This is the only one I'm gonna have that's on yours because it was just that bad of a decision. But drafting Michael Penix, terrible fucking decision. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, a few of these, was, will, a few, a few, if not just one, but a, one or two might overlap, guys. Just because some of them, they're just they're too dumb to ignore. They're too dumb. Um. So, now with the fourth worst signings in free agency, this one's probably going to catch me some heat, but it's also Kirk Cousins signing. The reason is the length of the contract, not good for his age and what injury he's coming off of, but also it kind of goes hand in hand with the Michael Penix drafting. If you didn't sign him, then that move would not have been as bad. Yeah, no, I can definitely agree with that. I the reason that wasn't on my list was because I just feel like you know go, going with Penix after signing Kirk was just un, was just unbelievably unnecessary. Um, but I can definitely agree that putting Kirk on that long of a contract with his age and the injury he's coming off of definitely not the smartest. So the next one, this is three, right? Yep. Three. Number three is. Chicago signing all-star or all-pro safety Kevin Byard. Reason why this is is because he really didn't do jack last year. He didn't make any big plays. He didn't make any big tackles. He didn't stop any scores. He was kind of just there. And this guy's an all-pro? Yeah, he he's absolutely not what he used to be. Let me make, let me make that clear. Like, if this was... Four years ago, and you signed him, home run. But he didn't do anything last year, so bad signing. Number two, and I'm surprised number two's not on your list, Nick, because this is one of the ones that I think should be on a lot of people's list. And that's the Cowboys re-signing Ezekiel Elliott back to the team. Very bad decision in my You know opinion. what? That was uh, almost on my list, but you know what? I kind of just went with the Cowboys doing absolutely fucking nothing because I feel like that kind of yeah, falls in the category of doing fucking nothing. <laughs> See, that? that's the thing, though. Like, that's one of the ones that 
only somewhat, you know, cross into each other because I went with a specific signing when there are few signings and you went with them signing nobody, which if we do timetable wise, yours came first, mine came second. So it makes sense that you can make different points with them. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And the number one worst move in my opinion is Tua's contract extension. Let me make this clear. It's not from a value standpoint. And that guys, and guys before for Kenny goes on with this, I just want to point out, Kenny's probably going to rag on Tua during his segment. We're going to get some angry Kenny today. So, uh, guys, strap in because it's going to get fun. It's gonna get... Tua's $167 million over four years. Not that bad of a contract. He didn't try to get overpaid or anything like that. So, you know, that that's fine. That's dandy. The problem with it is... His injury history is already there, specifically in the concussion department. All it takes is someone like TJ Watt slamming into him and him landing wrong. Boom. Over. Years over already. Yeah, you're kind of right. And you're... That's that's just the way it is. To me, that is the worst signing of this period because of the health concerns. Mainly. It's not like Tua, I don't think he has the talent for it either, but that's just me. Um, but well, just I mean, we've already seen health... Tua's brain essentially turned into fish paste. So. so that's why. It's not because of the contract per se, though I don't agree with it. It's the health side of things. Because all it takes is him taking a big hit, boom, and you think he's going to let you not pay him? Yeah, no, like, that's, come on, dude. That, we that's, know he's that... fucking egotistical. Definitely a, a dangerous signing by the Miami Dolphins. Dangerous not on the field, but dangerous due to, to his health concerns. But guys, that's just a little segment we wanted to do. We called that the 5-5 five and five or the 5-4-5. Five, five. Um, whatever you guys want to call it. That's just something that we wanted to do. Just, you know, a little bit what's what's been going on inside of our heads. How we've been thinking about this offseason. And uh, how we're uh, sort of getting ready for uh, this upcoming season. So, uh, guys, before we move on to the player spotlight, guys, this is the meat and potatoes of the show, and guys, we're already 45 minutes in, so guys, strap in, because we have a little bit longer of an episode that we're coming to you guys today, but guys, we're going to touch on the top 100 players of the 2024 season, as voted by the NFL players themselves. So, uh, Kenny, I think we should just start off with uh, number 100 and uh, work our way down. Yeah, I think that too. Number 100 is Zier Franklin, linebacker from the Indianapolis Colts. Um, This one I don't have that many thoughts on. Um, He obviously had to take over for the departed, um, what's his name? Uh, Shaq Leonard. And he did actually pretty well for taking over for him. I don't have the stats up, yeah, but no, obviously pulling for up 100. Shaq, uh, for, Shaq, for, for Shaq Leonard is never easy, but uh, I definitely feel like this, this like this guy was able to, you know, sort of fill the role as needed. So uh, I definitely feel like this is a well-earned uh, t- spot on the top 100. Levante David at 99 from Tampa Bay. Position? Just for uh, linebacker. Out there. Yeah, we just want to Obviously, touch, just want to touch on the position for the fans, just because you know we're going over a lot of people here. So, uh, guys, obviously, um, Levante is one of the best linebackers in the NFL right now. Yeah, so. obviously, very talented. Uh, that Tampa Bay defense, by the way, guys, I don't know about you guys, but that Tampa Bay defense still kind of looks pretty scary to me. I don't know. Um, here's the next one. Cameron Hayward, the tackle from Pittsburgh. Keep in mind, guys, this guy is in his mid-30s, I believe. Mid-30s, and you're still Mid-30s. playing in the, in the top 100, guys. That is that is impressive. That is impressive, to say the least. Obviously, Cameron Hayward also running buddies with with uh, TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith down there in uh, Pittsburgh. So. Uh, Terry McLaurin, wide receiver, Washington Commanders. Uh, very well earned. Terry, honestly, I'm surprised that Scary Terry isn't a, isn't a little bit higher up on this list. I feel like I feel like they're doing a little, him a little bit of an injustice with this placement. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. He should probably at least be a couple spots higher, in my opinion. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Uh, 
he's one of the few, obviously, bright spots for Washington the last couple seasons now. And, um, yeah, definitely had a great year last year, despite, you know, Sam Howell being his quarterback. Let me make this clear, guys. Sam Howell was not that bad for about half a season, and then he just turned over the ball way too much. Yeah, no, and honestly, I'm kind of excited to see Sam Howell in uh, Seattle, you know, s- sort of learn from Geno Smith, you know, because Geno Smith is definitely one of those guys that turned his whole that turned his whole career around. So if, if Sam Howell can do the same, Next you know up. what? I, I'm, I, I'd be very happy for him. Number 96, Deion Dawkins, tackle from the Buffalo Bills. Obviously, one of the people to keep Josh Allen on his feet instead of on his back. One of the better offensive tackles in the league as well. I believe that's well earned. Uh, definitely well earned. Listen, dr- blocking for Josh Allen is never easy, considering that Josh Allen is a fucking football god uh, most most Sundays. So, um, knowing knowing what where Josh Allen is going with the ball. Knowing what Josh Allen wants to do, and when you're being assigned, you know, an assignment to, you know, protect that guy, definitely well earned. Uh, de- just wanted to throw that out there. Obviously, we talked about this guy earlier, uh, but number ninety-five is Julian Love, safety from the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, again, guys, we t- obviously, we, yeah, again, guys, we touched on this one a little bit earlier, so we don't need to go real, real in depth on this one. Simply put, extended, that means he earned the spot. Yeah. I think that's all we have to say. Yeah, that, that, that's about it. That's the abridged version there, guys. There you go. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, number 94 for quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, I have a little bit of thoughts here, not because of the where he's ranked at, but I did want to real quick say Trevor Lawrence pl- did the Baker Mayfield thing and played hurt last year. Yeah, no, I... So, like I like props to Trevor for playing through an injury, but like at the same time, don't try to be Superman, dude. Yeah, nobody nobody can carry a team, especially when they're injured. So, but props to him still making number ninety four despite the injury. Um, Harrison Smith, safety from the Minnesota Vikings, is number ninety three. I feel like he's kind of been in the top one hundred. In his age, like, 34 season is what he's about to enter. He's still at the top of his game. Yeah, no, absolutely. This dude's been wrecking shit for years now. Next up, we got the first one that we both had a significant problem with, and that's number 92, Aaron Rodgers, quarterback from the Jets. Man, those, those that one play that Aaron Rodgers played? Dude, dude, that, that play must have been fucking insane. Did I miss it? Was there like 32 laterals, like 42 like fucking knockdowns and fumbles? Did I yeah, miss no, did it? I, did I miss it? something? Because Aaron Rodgers missed all the 2024 season, if I remember it correctly. I mean, don't get me wrong, NFL. I definitely can be stupid from time to time. But I remember Aaron Rodgers going down. Yeah, that's the first one where he should not have been on the list. Yeah, I'm Especially sorry. We... I'm sorry, NFL. I get it's Aaron Rodgers, but what the fuck? Are we sure this was fully for my players and not just, you know, Aaron himself? I wanted to also point out that any other quarterback could have probably been at 92, and it would have been even more well-deserved than Aaron Rodgers. Hell, I'd, I'd argue Desmond fucking Ritter or Taylor Heineke could have been her over here. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. They At least they fucking finished the season. And that would have been, and that, and they, and that's already saying more than Brett Favre did last season, or not Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers did last season. Ninety-one, Tariq Rowan, Rowan, cornerback, Seattle Seahawks. You know what? You know what? I I actually feel like that's a perfect placement. Yeah, he's uh, one of the young players on that. That very young Seattle team, actually. Now that I think about it. But he is such a good corner. He was so good last year, and he was pretty good the year before that too. You know, so definitely well deserved. Excellent placement uh, for the for Again, that young player. Again, we're going to keep number ninety short. Devonte Smith, wide receiver, Philadelphia Eagles, extended. That's all I have to say about. Yep, that. extended. Uh, number eighty nine. One of the few bright spots on this team, by the way, Buda Baker, safety from the Arizona Cardinals. Very, very, very good, 
good uh, call for from the NFL on this play, on this placement, in my opinion. Uh, Buda Baker, as you said, one of the bright spots in Arizona last year. Uh, although I again, I, I I've said this before on the show, and I, and I feel like Arizona last season was the best bad team in the league. They were scrappy. <laughs> they were going to make sure if you beat their ass, they were going to take a chunk of you with them. While yeah, they were no, going they, were, they were probably the best bad team in the league. And if anybody wants a reason why, simple. I think it was League 2 or 3 when they absolutely humiliated that. Uh, That's all fun I memories. To say. Fun memories. All right, offensive guard Chris Lindstrom from the Atlanta Falcons at number eighty-eight. You know what? You know what? I actually kind of feel like that's you know a little bit you know low, or I guess high. Yeah, I definitely you, agree. You, 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 I mean, I guess we're, since we're like going backwards, yeah, like like high, low. I I don't know. Well, we're going by numbers, so if you're meaning it should have been like 82 or something, then too low. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, next up, 87, Hassan Reddick, linebacker, now with the Jets, was with Philadelphia. Um, you know what? You know what? I, I, I really don't have much thoughts for this one. Pretty solid. I mean, he earned a contract with a new team, and yeah, you may, I mean, you earn a contract. I, I, you earn a contract somewhere else. You mean you're, you're definitely you definitely got an ounce of town on you. So, number eighty-seven, Saquon Barkley, running back, Philadelphia Eagles, was with the Giants. This is too low for me, considering he had to carry. I agree. That I agree. Way too low for Saquon. If I, if, to be honest, I'm putting Saquon probably in the top forty. I think same thing. I think the lowest you can feasibly put him would be like 50. Yeah, no, maybe top 50, but this is definitely too low for Saquon. Number 85, Tristan Wirfs, O-Tackle, Tampa Bay. Obviously, again, extended. Not much more to say there. Yeah, we also touched on him a little bit earlier, guys. So, you know, just moving on. Number 84, DK Metcalf, wide receiver, Seattle Seahawks. DK, I never skip leg day, Metcalf. DK, I'm the fuck, I'm the fucking fastest wide receiver in the league. Fuck you, Tyree Kale, Metcalf. Fuck you. T- yeah, fuck that guy. Uh, either way, I think that might be a slight bit low, but not criminally low for him. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Eighty-three, Derwin James, safety, Los Angeles Chargers. You know what? I, I actually feel like that's that shouldn't be on there. I'm sorry. The the, the, the Chargers just... I, I, as much as I agree that he was the bright spot in that Chargers secondary, the Chargers secondary was still the Chargers secondary. Yeah, really? Um, if I don't see Asante Samuel somewhere up here, then I don't understand. Because, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I think Derwin James at 83 is... She should be on the list. But I feel like Aaron Rodgers should be bounced and he should be, like, number 95 or something. Yeah, no. Aaron Rodgers shouldn't be on this list, period. But, like, I feel like we all know that. He was penalized a lot last season, but I also feel like he was almost targeted by the refs a lot, too. So, I don't know. I feel like 83 might be a smidge too high for him, but also I can kind of see why he's there, too, considering who's below him. I guess that's true. 82, Montez Sweat, D-end, Chicago Bears. Go ahead and go in depth. Almost single-handedly turn that Bears defense on. What was that? One sec. Sorry about that. I had to check on the dogs. Okay, so number 82, Montez Sweat, DN from the Chicago Bears. You know what, guys? I'm just going to point this out. The Bears' defense was very much lacking until Montez Sweat came around, and then Montez Sweat was, was traded to the Bears, and then the Bears' defense started playing like the Bears' fucking defense should. Honestly, underrated. Underrated, definitely. 
He should be in probably the 60s or maybe even the 50s, in my opinion. Yeah, I can definitely agree with definitely that. Definitely not. 81, uh, Kirk Cousins, quarterback, obviously then Minnesota, now Falcons. And let's be honest here. If you look at his stats, if he didn't get injured, he probably would have been in the MVP conversation. But listen, we we also have to play the we also have to play devil's advocate here. He did get injured, and like like yeah. we said, Aaron Rodgers wasn't on this list because you know as he as he, as we said, he missed the entire season. Kirk Cousins did not miss the entire season, but he definitely missed a large portion of it. He missed so, roughly half. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I have very, very feel, mixed feelings on that one. I feel like Rogers shouldn't be on the list. Kirk should be where Rogers is, and arguably Trevor should be a little bit higher. It's based on the quarterbacks we've seen up to this point. Who we got next? Next up, we have number eighty. Tight end Detroit Lions, Sam Laporta. You know what? That's actually a very good one. Sam Laporta was a very, very, very good tight end last year. Um, and, and he's still very young, too. So, you know what? I, very, very Yeah, he was very, just drafted. Yeah, no, just drafted. So, so, so you know, going he's going into his sophomore season, guys. Sophomore season in the NFL. And uh, quite frankly, I, I don't think we're going to see a sophomore slump out of this kid. This kid's been incredible. <laughs> He actually was one of the pieces that helped me win a couple of fantasy uh, titles last year. So. Oh, yeah. No, I had Sam Laporta on my team for a lot of the season, too. Uh, number 79, Minka Fitzpatrick, safety from Pittsburgh. I feel like he should be higher on the list. Like, probably... He should definitely... I think you're right. He should probably be in, like, the 60s and 50s, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just, still, just something about the way he plays. I feel like that's a bit low for Minka. Number seventy-eight, Kyron Williams, running back, Los Angeles Rams. You know what? Yeah, that's a that I I can agree with that one. Obviously, big part of that offense last year. Yeah, huge. And again, one of the pieces that helped a lot of people win fantasy games last year. Um, number 77, Trey Hendrickson, D-end from Cincinnati. Obviously a pretty solid defender. I think he might be a little bit underrated here. A smidge. Yeah, no, I can definitely agree with that. Sorry, it took me a minute to respond. I was smoking that, but, uh, yeah. Uh, definitely, I can definitely agree with your statement there. Uh, might be a little bit low, but... At this, at the end of the day, you know, I I feel like he's still got a lot to show us. So, um, number seventy six, Drake Greenlaw, linebacker, San Francisco Forty ers Another part of that lethal Forty uh, Niners defense, guys. You can tell just how much much of an impact he has on that defense when he went down in the Super Bowl and that defense almost looked discombobulated the rest of the game. Yeah, no, they really did. Number 75, my quarterback, Justin Herbert. I feel like he should be higher. I'm sorry. He, he should, should definitely He's the only higher. thing that carried the Chargers to any shred of relevance last season. Not just that, but, um, but he also played through an injury basically all the way through the year and if it wasn't for the injury being severe he probably would have kept playing with it at the end of it too who we got next give me just a second so guys we've gone through about what roughly roughly twenty five players so far, guys. We're about a quarter of the way through the list, so guys, uh, just strap in again, guys. Some of these placements, Kenny and I feel like some should be higher, some should be lower. Um, but uh, again, guys, th these were voted for by the NFL players. So when you see guys like Aaron Rodgers on the list after missing the entire season, like, did I miss something? Did I miss something? Was man, man, he must have been absolutely crazy in training camp. 
So I don't know, guys. Like, like th- this is sp- supposed to be voted by the NFL players, and I get that a lot of NFL players fear Aaron Rodgers, but come on, guys. Come on. Guys, you'll have to excuse us while we uh, wait for Kenny. Just give us a moment. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Yeah. Yeah. Been that dude, so they all better take heed. Money. Got the haters going ghost, like they Patrick Swayze. I've been talking real shit, y'all been talking crazy. I've been on some new shit, y'all been acting lazy. I've been it, so my words go and make you float. I'm like dry mixed with alcohol in a bowl. Or a Bullo Zero winter, go and grab a coat. What else can I say? The kid is just too cold. Never told a fib, was born just too bold. Never had to fold, but did break the mold. And as the story's told, if you didn't know, I'm running up the scope. This is DMO. Can you hear me? The summer been mines, man, they better fear me. They need Sorry glasses, about that. I had to talk to my clearly. landlord real quick. The money, it just like to come near me. Yearly, truly, my life is a movie. All Take right. All so, so, obviously, we mentioned Justin Herbert kind of carried that team. It, had he not had a serious injury, he probably would have finished the year, too. So, I think 75 is properly rated for him. Maybe yeah. that's the lowest I think you can possibly put him. I yeah, think he should be in the 60s or 50s. So we're about what quarter of the way through number the rest 70. Now? Yep, number uh, Herbert was number seventy-five. So uh, number seventy-four, Jesse Bates, safety, Atlanta Falcons. One of the br- bright spots on that team as well last year. I can definitely agree with that. Uh, the, the, the Falcons did not have a fantastic defense, guys, but Jesse, Jesse Bates is definitely one of the more talented players on that Falcons defense. Next up, 73, Jeffrey Simmons, D-tackle from the Titans. I'd say that might be a little bit underrated. He actually had a lot of, like, game-altering, like, sacks on people. In fact, when they played the Dolphins and upset them, he was a large portion of how that comeback happened. Yeah, no, it, I can definitely agree. That one feels a little bit low, but, um, yeah. Guys, again, there's a lot of these guys that we're just going to be flying through because we don't have a whole lot of thoughts, but the guys that we do, we will we will share our thoughts. 72, Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, New York Jets. Again, basically had to carry that offense with a shit I mean, we all already know when I was drafted to the Jets on my fucking, you know, little run I was doing on fucking Madden 24. Like, Matt, Garrett Wilson was the only guy I could throw to. Everyone else would drop everything. <laughs> Number 71, Laramie Tunsil O-Tackle from the Houston Texans. One of the top tackles in the game still. Again, never looked like he let anyone even get get a fingertip on Stroud last year. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well earned. Uh, Number 70, I think uh, almost criminally underrated receiver throughout his career. Uh, Amari Cooper, wide receiver for the Browns. You know what? He is kind of underrated as a receiver, guys. Uh, Amari Cooper isn't a guy that is that that isn't a guy that's gonna get you like a ton of touchdowns every week. But I'm not gonna lie, guys. I I I actually started playing him in my as my flex a few weeks last season, and he actually did kind of well as a flex. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um. Cooper Cup, number 69 for the wide, wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams. I mean, this is a guy that just led the that, that, that just led the league in receiving yards a season ago. Obviously so. missed some time last year, but still had a pretty wild stat line. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, Daniil Hunter, uh, DN with Houston. Now, obviously, prior was with the Vikings, was one of the sack leaders for a while last year. Uh, you know what? That's just another dangerous might be a piece list. for that Houston defense. Uh, it's just a smidge underrated for him, but not too bad. Um, 67, Teron Armstead, O-Tackle from the Dolphins, or now with the Dolphins, I believe he... Oh, wait, no, he was with the Dolphins last year, too. Um, 
pretty solid. I don't think he let up very many sacks last year, so. Who we got next? Not much else to say there. Number 66, Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers. I um, feel like that's low. One of Brock Purdy's. One of Brock Purdy's favorite targets, might I add. Yeah, no, but that, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of why I feel that's low. Uh, number 65, Jordan Poyer, safety, Miami Dolphins, former Buffalo Bill. Um, did have some injuries last year, but when he's on the field, he actually plays really well. So um, I think that might be a smidge overrated, in my opinion, though. You can probably drop him a couple spots. Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. But, uh, um, overall, not a bad placement. No. Number 64, Patrick Queen, linebacker with the Steelers now, former Raven. Uh, he was kind of that the captain of that defense. He kind of so. was, and you know what? That's gonna be that's gonna be good for the pit, for the Pittsburgh defense because again, the Pittsburgh Steelers guys uh, is a team that is looking to compete, even though they haven't really been competitive the last few seasons, despite what their records show. Just, Definitely agree. Uh, then we got Jalen Waddle at 63, wide receiver, Miami Dolphins. So we have the other receiver in Miami also making the list. Not nearly as high as the other one, though. One of, if not the best wide receiver twos in the league right now. Yeah, You can argue agree. he's the best wide receiver two in the league, but I think you can also argue like third or fourth best. Oh, yeah. Um, Jalen Waddle definitely... Uh, for for you for, for for you fantasy buffs out there, definitely worth looking at as a, as a wide receiver one for you. Just just in your fantasy league, guys. Uh, next is number sixty two, Bradley Chubb, also with the Miami Dolphins, linebacker. Um, I didn't really hear his name that much, so I feel like he's a little bit overrated here. I don't know. I can almost I can kind of agree with that. It, 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 very uh very mixed feelings on that placement. Number 61, Justin Matabike, D-tackle for the Baltimore Ravens. Matabike, one of the funnest names to say in the NFL. Also, uh, this is another one, extended. Don't have to say anything else. Yeah, just <laughs> extended. Number 60, this is one of your boys here, Tam. Not in real life, but in fantasy. Raheem Mostert, running back for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, I did have Mostert a lot, a lot of last season. You know what? Despite his high age, guys, Mostert is still producing. Um, I'm not going to go and call him one of the best backs in the league, but uh, he's definitely underrated because people just assume he's washed up because of his age. But, guys, he's still producing. He's a good He's a good two as part of a one-two punch. That's I can the definitely best way I agree with that. Uh, number 59, Bobby Wagner, linebacker for the Washington Commanders. Obviously way past his prime now, but still, well past he's, he prime. produced a little bit. He produced pretty well with the uh, Seahawks last year. Yeah, no, as long as you're um, producing, guys, I feel like you have a name on this list. Yeah. Number 58, this is one that I think might be underrated a little bit here. Christian Wilkins, DT with the Raiders, was with Miami. Led that team in sacks, by the way. Yeah, definitely, I can definitely agree with that being being slightly underrated. Um, I, I wouldn't go too much higher, though. Yeah, I'd say instead of him being 58, maybe put him at like 55. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number 57, one of the few bright spots on the uh, Denver defense, Justin Simmons, who is still a free agent currently at safety. Imagine a, fr a free agent being on the top 100 list and he's still not signed, bro. Yeah, that's fucking wild, to say the least. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Uh, num number 56, Stefan Diggs, wide receiver with te the Texans now, former Buffalo Bill. Kind of carried that offense for the first half of the season, but kind of disappeared for much of the second half. So I think that's a fair ranking for him. I can definitely agree with that. Uh, like I said, guys, we touched on him a little bit earlier during the 5-5 five and five, uh, when I was doing my list. Go, Maya, get down. Keep them busy for a second, Kenny. Uh, all righty.
All right, guys. But yeah, the uh, Stephon Diggs signing, obviously, with the Texans slash trading, I guess, was definitely a big move for them. And um, I don't know if Stephon Diggs is the one, two or three there in the, in Houston. But honestly, who the cares? He's going to probably get quite a few targets. And he's still one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. Definitely a top five to ten guy, depending on who you talk to. I'm back. But yeah, like I said to them, he's probably still a top like ten wide receiver. You can argue he's in the top five still as well. So definitely a good placement for him. Oh, definitely for Stephon Diggs. Number 55, Brian Burns, linebacker for the Carolina Panthers. Now with the Giants, obviously, again, one of the very few things that went well for Carolina. Yeah, Carolina obviously, guys, we know that a lot of things did not go well in Carolina last year, and uh, Brian Burns was one of the few things that did, so uh, when they got rid of him, I'm not going to lie, that was almost on my, do- on my top five dumbest moves. But then I thought, you know what? It's the Carolina Panthers. This is just par for the course for them. This is just par. All right, next up, number 54, Jonathan Allen, DN for the Washington Commanders. One of the better defensive linemen in the NFL, and you can argue he's probably, in terms of D tackles, which I think is his natural position, he's probably a top five in the league right now. Definitely, definitely. But obviously, obviously they put DN because they kind of mix him around. So, but I know his natural position is DT. Next Moving up, on. number fifty-three, a guy that always. Number 53, I think one of the guys that are almost always in the top 100, Zach Martin, guard for the Cowboys. You know what? He kind of is always in the top 100, isn't he? He Yeah, and he honestly one of the few Cowboys that almost always deserve a spot, too. Yeah, no, quite frankly, it's deserved. I mean, he's definitely one of the best in his his position right now. It's just unfortunate that he plays for the Cowboys. It's just... Number 52, PS2, uh, cornerback for the Denver Broncos. Ah, uh, yeah. I remember my PS2. Oh, not that PS2? <laughs> yeah. No, the, the player, Patrick Sertain the second. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I think a well-deserved placement there. I can definitely agree with that. Number 51, um... My boy would have been yours had you stayed with the Bears. Uh, number 51, Keenan Allen, wide receiver, currently with Chicago, was with the Chargers. And you know what? I feel like after the numbers he put up, it's deserved that he's on the list. I mean, the Bears went and got him for a reason to uh, just build around just build around that offense so Caleb Williams has weapons. Um, again, guys, we've already been very vocal on our thoughts on, on Caleb Williams, so there's no re- need for us to continue to rag on him for just existing. But, uh, yeah. But luckily, um, he's not on this list, so we don't have to talk about that. Well, he hasn't taken a snap uh, number yet. 50- I guarantee he'll be on next year's, no matter how shitty well, the Bears based are. Well, on how the fan, based on how the fan base act, they'd probably be like, he should be number one this year. Probably. <laughs> um, number 50, Rashawn Gary, linebacker for the Green Bay Packers. You know what? I don't like the Packers, but this one's well-earned. Um, that's all I really have to say on it. Yeah, definitely. Um, number 49, we don't got to say shit about this guy. I believe there's nothing we can say to disprove this, and he might even be a little bit underrated. Number 49, Derrick Henry running back for the Ravens. Yeah, like like Kenny said, guys, what is there to say? What is there to say about Derrick Henry? Like I said, I, I, like he said, I feel like this one might be criminally underrated for how much he produced for the Titans, but... uh. Yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, well deserved spot in the top 100. Number 48, Jared Goff, quarterback for the Detroit Lions. You know what, guys? Jared Honestly, Goff actually, a lot of people just assume that Jared Goff had this fall off when he was traded from the Rams to Detroit. Then he was traded to Detroit and he kind of found a second life. I also want to point out, like, there's a reason McVay wanted to get uh, Stafford for Goff. It's not because Goff necessarily was bad. He just didn't fit what McVay wanted to do. But yeah, he's proven to be one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL now. Um, 
Number 47, another Detroit Lion in Aiden Hutchinson, the end. I feel like this one's underrated, criminally underrated. Aiden Hutchinson's probably one of the best defensive ends in the league, if not the best defensive end in the league, and he's still incredibly young. Most definitely agree with that. Next, we're going to talk about number 46, Antoine Winfield Jr., safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, guys, obviously, we're flying through a little bit more of this list. We're a little more than halfway, guys. And, uh, honestly, I feel like this one, uh, this one's might, this one might be well. Might be well placed. Mr. Riggs, how are you doing? How are you yeah, doing? We're having a good cool. afternoon. We're going through the top 100 players of the 2024 NFL season right now. Uh, number 45, I don't think we have to debate too much on this one, though it might some might think he's a little bit underrated here. Jamar Chase, wide receiver, Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, I can definitely agree that's underrated, but like you said, what's there to say about Jamar Chase? Jamar Chase is just an absolute stud, and uh, quite frankly, he's still producing. He's still very, very young, and uh, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like as we get deeper into Jamar Chase's career, we're only going to see him go up this list. I feel like the lowest you can put him is probably number five or six wide receiver in the NFL, in my opinion. Oh, easily. Easily. Jamar Chase is... All that dude does is catch big touchdowns. Number 44, Demario Davis, linebacker from New Orleans Saints. You know what, guys? The, Sa- the Saints... Everyone, as, as you near, your name, Tree said, guys, the Saints are marching into hell. Um, but, uh, Demario Davis is definitely one of the more talented players on the Saints defense. Um, definitely one of those big names that you want to keep around if you are the Saints. Although, again, if you're the Saints, how the hell are you going to do that? Yeah, definitely got themselves in cap hell. Uh, number 43 is Kyle Hamilton, safety for the Baltimore Ravens. I feel like that might be a little bit low. Um, because I, I, I understand, like, Lamar Jackson was placed number two on the list. At least I think he was number two. I know he was top five. But, uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that, that say, well, the defense does everything and then Lamar gets all the credit. So, I, I feel like this might be a little bit low. But at the same time, I, I, I don't agree I that. don't agree with the people that say, well, like, like it, Lamar's just getting all the credit for the defense. Because it's not just the defense. I mean, you can probably put him a spot or two higher, but I think that's the max for him, considering where he is on the list. Number 42, we we already brought his name up once earlier, but 42 is Matthew Stafford, quarterback for Los Angeles Rams. Again, guys, again, not a guy we need to talk a whole lot on. We touched on him a little bit earlier um, during, the news, during the news briefing, so um, moving on. Number 41, Lane Johnson, tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this one, this one's interesting because Lane Johnson kind of is like a player that no one knows, but he's kind of one of those unsung heroes of the line, you know? Yeah, he kind of like, he just does his job. Like, he doesn't talk very much, you know, media-wise, and he just does his job. Like, yeah, no, he, his like, name like, isn't mentioned. Quite frankly, that's what you, that's what you gotta do in the NFL. It's the same same thing in any sport. As long as you do your job, you're good. And that, that, quite frankly, that's all this guy does. Um, he does his job. He does his job. Number forty, Devontae Adams, wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh man, I. I, Devontae Adams, the fall off he had, he's had with the Raiders. I, I I keep seeing him fall lower and lower on this list when he was such a great receiver when he was playing with Aaron Rodgers. But at the same time, I understand he left for Las Vegas to play with Carr. Then they got rid of Carr. What, what are you going to do if you're Devontae Adams? Hey, for those that didn't watch Red Receiver, by the way, or Receiver, he almost fucking left because of Jimmy G. Yeah, like, like, what are you gonna do if you're Devontae Adams? Like, you're, you're, you're easily like a top receiver in the NFL, but you just have the worst guys that could possibly be throwing you the ball, throwing you the ball right now. Yeah, like I feel sorry for Devontae, man, going from Hall of Famer to Hall of Bust real quick. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next up, we have number thirty-nine, Joe Shiesty. Quarterback for the Bengals. Joe Burr. Joe Go Burr. Joe Go Burr. 
And honestly, like, I think it's properly rated despite him missing quite a few games. I can um, definitely agree with that. Joe him, Burrow, even though he ended up missing a, a, a portion of the season, he still produced massively for the Bengals in the de- games that he did play. So I definitely feel like this one is definitely one that we could have still had on the list despite an injury. Yeah. Next, we have another really good corner. Number 38, Sauce Gardner, cornerback for the New York Jets. I feel like that like might be a little bit low for the Sauce, man. Like, Sauce Gardner was probably one of the best corners in the league. Not to mention the dude's just a fun guy. Like, for those of you who don't know, guys, Sauce Gardner, easily, easily. I Like, Sauce, Sauce Gardner just gives off bro vibes. He really does. Like, go check out Sauce, Sauce Gardner's Twitter, <laughs> Twitter sometime, guys. I swear to God, the bro just eat, the guy just emits bro energy. Um, yeah, most definitely. Uh, 37, one of his teammates, actually, Quentin Williams, D-tackle for the New York Jets. Quentin Williams, you know what? Well earned. Well earned. Despite, despite the fact that the Jets weren't great, but that was mostly due to their lack of a quarterback. Yeah, just, dude, I'm surprised that we didn't see Garrett Wilson go fucking nuclear on the sideline a few times. Just yeah, from quite having frankly, Zach Wilson I am Berlin. too. I'm surprised we didn't see him pull an Odell from when he was with the Giants. God <laughs> <laughs> fucking damn it, kicking that fuck. <laughs> Moving on. Number 36, Tua turned the ball over. Uh, quarterback for the Dolphins. I think 36 is too high for Tua, not because not not just because I hate Tua, because I fucking despise the guy, but Stafford should be above him. Goff should be above him. Easy. Yeah, guys, Easy. Uh, like I said, you guys are probably going to get a dose of Angry Kenny later uh, during his segment, so uh, just be, be ready, because Angie Kenny is very fun. Anyways, what are your thoughts on Tua being number 36? I'm sure you kind of echo my thoughts a little bit there. You know what? As much as I do want to echo some of your thoughts, I do agree that there are some quarterbacks on this list that are lower, that are, you know, higher on the list that should be above him. Um, But, like, I don't want to go out and say that he doesn't deserve a a spot in the top 100. No. He deserves a top 100 spot, just not that high and not above who he's above. Yeah, no, that that, that I can definitely agree with. Uh, number 35, I don't know why they put his middle name in, but Josh Hines Allen. Linebacker Josh the Allen. Dead. Yeah, probably because, probably just to uh, di- differentiate from him from the other Josh Allen. Oh, yeah, I remember when they had to try to call that. Josh Allen sacks Josh Allen behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Josh Allen recovers a fumble from Josh Allen, and Josh Allen scores a touchdown. <laughs> Just from the crowd, which one? Which one? <laughs> Number 34, quarterback Jordan Love, Green Bay Packers. Again, lower on the list. Way too low not on higher, this list. Not, not this, kid, this kid shouldn't even be on this list, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely uh, kind of overhyped for half a good season. Yeah, but again, I Number feel... Two, I, I, wait, 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 here's the thing, though, right? right. I feel like the Green Bay Packers have such a big fan base that like any player that ever plays for them is somehow going to be overrated to a degree. But like the, 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 the amount of glazing that's going on with Jordan Love, guys, is absolutely ridiculous and honestly guys like my my segment this week might not even be on houston it's it, it might just be me might just be me ragging on jordan love for a little bit number 33 a guy that i think despite only being a rookie could be a few spots up uh, a few spots higher here keep them busy uh, Kenny. Puka Nakua, go the dogs. Angeles what keep them busy i gotta go check on the dogs okay but yeah, guys, Jordan Love, um, that's going to be probably team segment. Mine's obviously going to be talking about um, Tua, both of which I believe we have already spoken about with their contracts not exactly being deserved. Um, also, guys, my segment won't just be on Tua. 
in the Dolphins, it'll be a lot more about the Cowboys. So just so you guys are aware of that, it's not going to have really anything to do with the Chargers themselves because I think I've already stated a lot of my thoughts going into, you know, preseason action so far, what I think is going to happen. Um, Maybe we'll retouch base with the Chargers specific stuff in, you know, another few episodes when we're actually into the regular season. But for now, I think that's... All right, I'm back. Sorry about it's that. It's best for me to use my segment to address other teams. Yeah, sorry. I just All right. Keep an eye on uh, number, 30... number 33, wide receiver, Los Angeles Rams, Puka Nakua. You know what? Puka, I, I feel like he's being underrated on this list. Puka was probably one of the best receivers in the in the league last year. And not to mention, late round gem. Yeah, absolute fucking diamond in the rough, to say the least. And dude came out of fucking nowhere. Rams fans thought they were done after uh, Cup was going to miss four games, and Puka's like, no, I'm here. What do you mean? Yeah, no, Puka <laughs> literally came out of nowhere and said, no, we're not done. I'm going to do this now. Number 32, Quincy Williams, linebacker for the Jets. Honestly, properly rated, in my opinion. He wasn't mentioned a ton, but again, he was part of a defense that had to be on the field a lot of the time. Yeah, last year. And, but here's 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 my beef with this one, right? The Jets' defense in it's, it's not even just the latter half of the season. After essentially what was like week three, essentially, the Jets' defense kind of just gave up, right? Yeah. So like, there there's my beef with that one. All right, that's fair. Uh, number thirty-one, Deron Bland, cornerback from the Dallas Cowboys. What'd Everyone remembers the infamous line. Uh, number thirty-one, Deron Bland, cornerback from the Cowboys. Okay, okay. As we all remember the famous line, this player might have more touchdowns than your favorite team does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know the funny part is he might. Yeah, he might. He might act dead ass. He might. <laughs> but I think thirty one's good for him. I definitely agree with that. Unfortunately, like if you're gonna put Puka at thirty three, Duran can go at thirty one. Like come yeah, on. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Number thirty, Debo Samuel, wide receiver for the Forty Nine ers. You know what? I feel like I he feel should like be that's higher. a little overrated. I, I I feel no. I feel like he should be higher. I only think he should actually no. He could could be a little bit higher. He does kind of help with Brandon Ayuk's production. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that's that's why I say that. I feel like he should be a little bit higher. I for I like for a second just blanked on the fact that when he wasn't there, like Ayuk's numbers weren't good either. So yeah, I got I gotta say I put him higher. Number 29, somebody who is on my team that I think is still a little bit underrated here. Um, linebacker Khalil Mack. Oh, Khalil Mack. God, I miss him on the Bears. Again, he's 29. I feel like that might be a little bit underrated for him, considering he was basically our main pass rusher almost all of last year. And he's probably going to be again. Yeah, probably. I mean, Khalil Mack but and Joey Bosa, I mean, that's already a lethal combination. So, you know, it, it's like, actually, it's, I, I, like, guys, I'm just going to say it now because, I'm, again, I, I want to give you guys the full dosage of Angie Kenny. But I feel like now that the Chargers are actually being coached by an actual adult and not some idiot that needs to be launched into the sun, I feel like they actually could start making some noise. Yeah, and uh, Khalil Mack, what what do we have to say about him that isn't already said? Yeah, for real. Like, the, the, the dude's a fucking monster. I mean, he single-handedly, his, him getting traded away by the Raiders, single-handedly made their defense look like shit until Max Crosby showed up. For real. 
Next, number 28, Brock Purdy, quarterback for the 49ers. Another guy that, again, guys, came out of nowhere a few seasons ago, but uh, this was Mr. Irrelevant, but uh, look at him now. Top 100 in the NFL. Not to mention, for those of you that don't remember, his first start, he beat Tom Brady. Yeah, no. What, what, what a way to start. Make a statement. Number 27, Nick Bosa, D-end, 49ers. Well earned. Well earned. I think he might be a little... I think he could be a spot or two lower or higher, depending on who you talk to. But I think the play, the that's a good place. Yeah, I feel him. like the general consensus would, would probably pay, put him right where he's at. Number 26, a guy that I think is definitely underrated here, wide receiver, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Mike Evans. Definitely underrated. Mike Evans is actually a very talented wide receiver, and a, and a lot of people just don't want to look at his numbers. But when you do look at his numbers, guys, this guy produces. Like, I don't think he's had a season without a thousand yards yet. I don't think so either. And keep in mind, a few of the, quite a few of those were with Jameis fucking Winston. Yeah, crazy. Number twenty-five, Jalen Ramsey, cornerback, Miami Dolphins. I believe that's too high. I believe that's a bit too low. The reason why I believe that's too high is he missed a good chunk of the beginning of the year and didn't do a ton when he got back. Well, you may, I guess you I guess you make an excellent point there. The reason I just the re, really the only reason I, reasoning I have for him being too low is it's Jalen Ramsey, guys. It's Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, see that you're using name value I'm using what he actually did keep in mind if we get mad at people for putting Rodgers on the list we got to get mad at him here too I he guess that produce. is true so yeah no I can def I can definitely agree with your take here 24 Dexter Lawrence DT New York Giants literally one of like four things that went well for them yeah for the real uh, Dexter that. Lawrence absolute shit wrecker Number 23, I'm going to say underrated just because of what we learned in the show receiver. Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, Detroit Lions. Uh, guys, for those of you who don't know, Amon Ross St. Brown is a psychopath. For those of you that are wondering why, Tane, tell them why. <laughs> <laughs> this man... Makes this man has made an has made a note of every receiver that was drafted above him just so he can prove how high he should have gone. Like if that man is not if not that doesn't that. scream I am out for fucking vengeance and every little thing that happens that goes wrong for me I will add as fuel to my fire. I I don't know what does. Also, he played through an injury all season that would have made all of us not move until it was healed. Yeah, no. Like, we'd, we'd have all been crying like babies and paralyzed. This dude played through it. Guys, Amon Ross St. Brown is a psychopath. And well-deserved at 23. Definitely should be higher, though. Definitely. Definitely. Number 22... Panay Sewell, Sewell, offensive tackle, Detroit Lions. You know what? Probably one of the better offensive offensive linemen in the league, if we're being honest. Sewell is very, is very talented at his position. Uh, and, and I know a lot of offensive linemen and defensive linemen, just linemen in general, don't get a lot of glory. But this guy is very, very good. I definitely agree. Um, number 21, A.J. Brown, wide receiver for the Eagles. Again, extended, nothing else. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say the same thing, just extended. Number 20, the Offensive Rookie of the Year, C.J. Stroud, quarterback for the Houston Texans. My boy, a.k.a. what Justin Fields could have been if the Bears actually developed him right. What Justin Fields will be in, a.k.a. what Justin Fields will be in Pittsburgh. Again, um, based on who I see above him, it might actually be a proper rating for him. Yeah, yeah. J based on who I've seen, who was placed above him, I can definitely agree it's a proper rating. Number 19, Roquan Smith, linebacker for Ravens. 
Again, if if he was still a Bears fan, he would be so fucking angry right now. Oh, dude, <laughs> don't even get me started. That's one of the reasons I'm happy I left because, God damn it, Bears, what are you doing getting rid of this guy? Number 18, Justin Je Jefferson, wide receiver, Minnesota Vikings. You know what? Honestly, one of, one of if not the best receivers in the league, guys, uh, we touched on him earlier during my 5-5, five and five, so there's not really a whole lot to say. Again, extended, and also considering the fact he had well over 1,000 yards with fucking Dobbins throwing him the football, and a or Dobbs throwing him the football, and a bunch of other no-names, like, that's... Yeah, it's, Honestly, it's that's a fair rating for him. If he would have played the entire season, this would be too low, but because he missed games, that's a fair pl uh, place to put him. Yeah. Number 17, Micah Parsons, linebacker, Dallas Cowboys. A.K. the man that can't show up in the fucking playoffs. That's going to be part of my segment, by the way. Yeah, guys, uh, again, we're, we're kind of saving the best for last as we do every week. And, uh, guys, again, I'm just I'm just not going to touch on it because I want you guys to get angry. I want you guys to get the full experience of Angie Kenny. <laughs> Number 16, Dak Prescott, quarterback, Dallas Cowboys. Overrated! As much as we hate on the Cowboys. He is overrated here, but I can't say he doesn't deserve to be on the list. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be not be on the list. I'm saying he this be is in like a far to too high placement for this guy. My God. Let's see. The quarterbacks below him, uh, Stroud should definitely be above him, even though it's only his rookie season. Uh, uh, Brock Purdy, same thing. As much as you hate Jordan Love, even he has to be above it. I don't know. Tua I should be know. above him. I don't know. Here's the th like I said, Jordan Love only did half a good season, so like I said, I don't know about that one. You know how much I hate Tua, and Tua should be above him too. Yeah. Overrated, guys. Next up, we have number 14, George Kittle, tight end for the 49ers. Well earned. I mean, Kittle's probably one of the best best receiving tight ends left in the league ever since Mark Andrews got hurt. I mean, and, and plus his name isn't Travis Kelsey. So, you know, I guess he's kind of stuck playing second yeah, player until that. Kelsey's gone, but yeah. Next up, number 13, CD, I carry Dak Press. It's got to relevance, Lamb, wide receiver, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, yeah, guys, Kenny said it all. CD is the guy that carries that 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 overrated garbage heap to a to, to relevance. So, number twelve, Josh Allen, quarterback, Buffalo Bills. Now, guys, see this is what we were talking about with the other Josh Allen. With the other... You had to make the distinction early because he knew Josh Allen was up here somewhere. Oh yeah, you definitely <laughs> had to make the distinction. And honestly, I'm going to say this, and I might get some hate. He should be in the top five, and Lamar shouldn't. I don't care what anyone says. Lamar should not be at two. And <laughs> Allen should be above him. Moving on. <laughs> he had, let me, let me make sure this is clear. He had the most touchdowns by a quarterback last year. Most. That's all I'm going to say up on that, though. <laughs> 11, Fred Warner, linebacker, San Francisco 49ers. Well earned. Uh, th th that 49ers defense yeah. was very lethal all season, and uh, this is a very, very well earned spot. Max Crosby, DN, Las Vegas Raiders. What's there to say about Max Crosby that hasn't already been said? This dude comes into backfields and absolutely wrecks your shit. And he gets paid as lots of money to do earlier, it. As we said earlier, if he was not drafted by the Raiders, their defense would still look like a flaming pile of dog shit. Yeah. They still look like a flaming pile of dog shit, but... At least they Max have that Crosby little sparkle like from, Mac, from Max Crosby, you know. That. You know, they're, they're the golden trash bag. They're the golden tr Number nine, Travis Kelsey, tight end... Uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Travis, a.k.a. I 
dated Taylor Swift just so I could get another ring, but people credit all to, credit all to Patrick Kelsey. Exactly. That's mm, yeah. All right. Here's the first of the top ten that I think we both will have a problem with. Number eight, T.J. Watt, linebacker, Steel, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh. Single-handedly changes the complexion of the yeah. game. Yeah. For real. But here, here's the thing, right? He has a lot of issues, especially these last few seasons, with staying healthy and staying on the field. But with that being said, we're going to touch base on this a little bit later because he is a little bit higher up. But he also had better stats than arguably both of the people above him. Yeah, probably. But we're going to get to that here in a second. Number seven, Trent Williams, offensive tackle, San Francisco 49ers. He is the anchor of that old line, and he did not play. You saw it. Yeah, no, it was definitely uh, when 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 he was off the field, you could tell there was definitely something lacking in that off in that in that 49ers protection line, and uh, he was it. <laughs> Next up, number six, Chris Jones, D tackle, Kansas City Chiefs. The best D tackle in the game now. That oh, Aaron without Donald's a not. doubt, without a doubt, Chris Jones is an absolute beast. However, one of the people I mentioned should not be above TJ Watt. It, 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 Just it, my it, opinion. I, I feel like this, like he's another one of those guys. Like he was the defensive Travis Kelsey. Like he, he single handedly brought the Chiefs to another Super Bowl or, because he was so fucking good. But, yeah, again, people are crediting it all to, oh, Patrick Mahomes. Let me, I'm going to say number five, and then I'm going to say what I think about this. Number five, Miles Garrett, the end, Cleveland Browns. Here's what I personally think. Chris Jones, five. TJ Watt, six. Miles Garrett, seven. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Anyone with a functioning brain knows that TJ Watt is better than Miles Garrett right now. Yeah. Not by a lot, but he yeah, is. Not by a lot, because Miles Garry is still an absolute scary scary motherfucker of a human being. My God. Now, this top four is where we're going to have a whole, quite a bit to say, I think. Yeah, this is where we get to the number, good part. <laughs> number four, as much as we hate it, Patrick Mahomes, quarterback, Chiefs, should be one. Should no. Be one. No, I disagree. I think he is Four perfectly two. placed. Four two. I, I got, listen, 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 listen. I'm going to get a lot, a lot, a lot of flack for what I'm about to say. But the but just know that the words that are about to come out of my mouth are 100% factual. Guys, Patrick Mahomes last <laughs> season had his lowest statistical season to date. That's why I feel like he is not he is not number one, and that's why I feel like he him not being at number one is validated. Here's the thing. I think number two is better for him. Number two or three. Reason why I say that is you got Lamar at two, and yeah, he won MVP, but again, didn't really do dick in the playoffs. I can almost agree with that, but again, I, I, I feel... Look at their numbers side by side, Kenny, for, 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 for me for a second. Like, Patrick Mahomes didn't exactly produce much more than Lamar did for his offense, okay. and Lamar was doing it Hold with on, less let, pieces. Let me go ahead and real quick actually compare their stats here. Like, actually put it into, like, quarterback head-to-head comparison and actually see how close or whatever these numbers are because i haven't actually looked at them since the season ended so okay there you go it just took him a, a second to load so we are looking at patrick i'm surprised peterson comes up before Mahomes does that's actually pretty funny uh lamar jackson get results It takes a second to load, unfortunately, so we'll see what it comes up with, though. Okay, so let's look at this here. Um, unfortunately, this is in career. Can I put it to just last season? Yeah, I'll put it at just last season. 
just so it's, you know, a fair shake here. <laughs> and it didn't even load properly that time. Oh, that's because they're stupid and they put 2024 on here and 2024 hasn't started yet. Dipshits. Okay, now we'll we'll compare the stats real quick. Because they had like career stats and it's like obviously Mahomes has better career stats. Okay, so Lamar and him had the same completion percentage. Mahomes had more passing yards, but that's to be expected. Mahomes had three more uh, passing touchdowns, but again, to be expected, Lamar did. But Lamar did have half the interception numbers. Okay, you know what? I changed my mind. That's fair. Yeah, you you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I I had to look them up because I really didn't compare the two stats before. But that's that's fair. He, like I said, I I'm Patrick probably gonna get words. a lot of hate for 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 those words coming out of my mouth, but. Just know that every single one of those words were factual. Now, number three, I think we can both agree is wrong. Christian McCaffrey running back 49ers at three. I feel like that at they three, actually though? have him a bit too high. And here's why. Right? I get that he finally played his first full season, but he, guys... It, and as much as I don't believe in the Madden curse, guys, Christian McCaffrey's getting old. Personally, if it were me, when we get done with the list, I'm going to say which, which of these top three I'm going to be switching around. But I do believe Christian at three is not correct. Number two, Lamar Jackson, quarterback, Ravens, obviously MVP. We talked about this already. Yeah, we just talked talk, talked about him when we were talking on Patrick Mahomes there. So, guys, if anything, Chiefs number fans, one, stay mad. Number one, Tyreek Hill, wide receiver, Miami Dolphins. This is where my problem with Chris, Christian McCaffrey being at three comes from. He was a better player than Tyreek Hill. Yeah, Simply but, put. but here's the thing. I feel like Tyreek is more of a vital piece to his offense than McCaffrey is to his. I can probably say that because, again, he kind of has to carry two with irrelevance. But at the same time, you can kind of say the same about Christian McCaffrey to a degree. I mean, yeah, they still have all the weapons, but do you really think that Brock would have the time if they didn't have... Christian back there running like he does. I mean, I guess you can go either way on that. But guys, that Just is my the top... opinion. What, what's up? Hold on. My opinion of how I'd switch this around. Lamar at one, Christian at two, Tyreek at three, and it's a coin flip for two and three. But I think Lamar should be one. So guys, that is the top 100 players of the 2023-2024 season. Um, guys, again, voted for by the NFL players. Uh, we Again, we have a lot of very mixed feelings on certain placements, but uh, we went through all 100. Guys, we are creeping up on two hours streamed, guys. We are doing a, we are killing time excellently. But guys, without further ado, it's time for us to jump into something that we were talking about doing earlier in the show. Guys, it is time for a little bit of a player dissection, guys. We have the player spotlight, and I just had it fucking, here we go. And here we go, guys. The player spotlight for this week, we brought him up earlier. We already said this would be the guy. Jordan Love is who we're talking about here. The main reason we are spotlighting him, unlike some of the other people we have spotlighted, is because of a contract extension, not so much what we could see from him this year, but that will also be part of what we talk about too, I think. Yes, yes, obviously. Guys, uh, again, we, as Kenny said, this was this is a little bit more of a little bit different of a player spotlight. Usually we, we like to highlight players that have maybe, you know, gone downhill a little bit and might have promise, but th th this, one's, this one's a little bit more of the opposite. This one started off not so great, 
and then began to show promise towards the end. So this one is, like I say, it's 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 very much a player spotlight, but it's 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 a player spotlight in reverse. See, Jordan Love is basically his season was the opposite of what Sam Howell's was. Sam Howell started quick, ended bad. He started slow, ended good. So, uh, guys, I think that's the best so, as like I said, we we, we obviously we want to, we want to touch on this because of the extension. Now, guys, we also went over the amount of money that Jordan Love is getting paid by the Green Bay Packers, and I think it's way too much, especially considering his production last season. I think considering he's a top paid quarterback without really playing like one for a full season, that is the main purpose behind that number being too high. Like, if you look at the other top player or quarterbacks paid, you have, like, Jalen Hurts is up there. We know what he's about. Uh, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. We've seen enough of them to know what they bring to the table. We haven't seen enough of Jordan to know if this is him consistently or not. Again, guys, like, we, I, 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 like a lot of people like to throw shit at me because I criticize Jordan Love a lot. Uh, and I do, guys. I do. But guys, these are genuine concerns I have about Jordan Love, and I don't think that Jordan Love is all that you're cracking him up to be, guys. Jordan Love had half a good season, and I'm standing on that. I will die on that hill, guys. Throughout, I, 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 I can go back and pull and pull up memories, guys. Guys, throughout the first eight weeks or so of last season, Jordan Love was in danger from the Packers fans of, oh, this kid is awful. Get Sean Clifford out there. Get Jordan Love out of the game. This kid is the worst Packers quarterback I've ever seen. Then we fast forward to week 18, right? And, oh, my God, Jordan Love's a generational quarterback. Oh, my God, Jordan Love is so good. Oh, my God, oh, my God. And, guys, I I, I have never seen a fan base flip-flop so quickly. Yeah, that's one of the quickest turnarounds I've ever seen, probably. So, okay, why why don't you uh, pull up some numbers for us, and uh, we can we can start dissecting these numbers. Okay, so obviously, I'm just gonna start with the with the yearly stats, and then we're gonna get to the splits for games, because the yearly stats are deceiving for last year. But keep in mind, he had a total of one start before that, and he didn't win that game. He had two touchdowns, three picks, and his only career start, or his first career start. He played four games last, or the previous season. One touchdown, no picks, only 195 yards. Again, didn't play much. This year, played all 17 games, 9-8. and eight. 4,159 yards, 32 touchdowns, 11 pitch. Everyone would be like, oh, those are such great numbers, right? It, don't you think people would immediately think that? Oh, yeah, de- definitely. But when you, like like you said, the career numbers are very deceiving. So we're going to actually go, go and look at the game splits here because that's where it's more telling in both of our opinions. Um... Game log specifically is what it's called. So let's look at his first game against. Let's just start with Chicago, right? Yeah, week he one. He won the Chicago game by Bears. eight. Won the game by eight points. You know, twenty-seven to thirty-two, three hundred sixteen yards, two touchdowns. That's a solid day. We'll it, it, it's it's, it's, it's an solid. okay day, but you know, you're again, you're you're out there playing the Bears. Um, and I would also like to point out. He beat the Bears by eight. The The Bears were an absolute fucking train wreck of a team. Yeah, that's just the way it is here. Um, then you look at Minnesota, 34-33, three touchdowns, 256 yards. Again, those three touchdowns, great and all, but Minnesota at that point in time really only had Daniel Hunter showing up. Um, so that's... Obviously, but again, guys, the, these numbers that we're anything. seeing from these individual games are not jaw dropping. They're 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 solid. Then you get to Carolina, seventeen of twenty eight, two nineteen, two touchdowns. If you don't get that at minimum against Carolina, you suck. It's that it's just that simple. I would also like to point out that they just about lost to the Carolina Panthers too. 
When you guys are getting yeah, 33 out to 30. coached by the Carolina Panthers. I'm sorry, there's something that you need to do. You got issues, my friend. And then now let's talk about Tampa Bay, the first loss of the season. 34 to 20. 284 yards, two touchdowns. Baker Mayfield outplayed him in that game. Well, and you and got, now, I now, guys, you and, and, and I know a lot of you Packer backers are going to come rushing to Jordan's defense saying, oh, well, J you guys just said that Baker Mayfield had this outstanding season. Yeah, he did, guys. But, again, you guys are hyping up Jordan Love like he's like, like, like this amazing quarterback. He got genuinely outplayed. Here's the thing with Baker, too. Baker had to research his own career. That's why his numbers are impressive because he was he went from Carolina to the Rams. They had to give him a prove it deal in Tampa, and he had to play well to stay there, and so he did. It's that simple. Also, the next week kind of hinders your argument a little bit there when it comes to the last game, twenty-four to twenty-two loss to, to the Giants, two uh, two hundred. 18 yards, Not to, one I also want to throw this out there to the Tommy DeVito led Giants. Yeah, specifically Tommy DeVito led Giants. You got outplayed by That's Tommy the, DeVito. And it wasn't part. It's not as close as the stats I think show you. It is probably a lot more one sided than we knew. Then you go on, okay, good job, clap, clap, clap. You beat Kansas City. We'll give you props for that. Yeah, no, that this is this is sort of the start of the renaissance of people starting to overhype Jordan Love. 267 yards, three touchdowns. Again, you didn't even eclipse 300 yards. And you played the Kansas City Chiefs in Green Bay. If that was NKC, you guys would have been absolutely murdered. Again, guys, I, I will give Jordan Love his props. Clap, clap. You beat the Chiefs while Taylor Swift was in attendance. Now, here you go. Another little bit of a clap, clap here. Good job. You guys beat Detroit, 29-22. But again, 268 yards, three touchdowns. That three touchdowns looks good. That 268, considering how bad their secondary is, that's not great. <laughs> yeah, no, like like we said, guys, these these career numbers for Jordan Love are very deceiving. You have to look at the game splits. And then you look, the next team was against my Chargers, 23-20, 27-40, 3-22, two touchdowns. Now you don't have the touchdowns looking good. You have good yardage, but there's a little asterisk I, I have to mention in this game when I talk about it. Quentin Johnston dropped what would have been a touchdown to make you guys lose that game. Simply put, you were literally one catch away from losing that. If Herbert threw to Keenan Allen or anybody else, that would have been game over. I just want to I just want to make that clear for that specific situation. And I think that's a fair enough asterisk to put there, don't you yeah, think? No, I definitely can agree with that asterisk. And then you go to Pittsburgh, you lose 23 to 19, 21 for 40, two touchdowns, two interceptions, 289 yards. Not impressive in the slightest there. Yeah, no, very, very poor performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, oh, look, the only other defenses you faced that were, like, fully put together from top to bottom was Tampa. And guess what? You lost there, too. Yeah, no, not to mention, when, when, when like, you're getting picked off four times by the Pittsburgh Steelers, dog. It was like, too... You, you gotta go back to the lab, Tampa. bro. Then, oh wow, you beat the Rams 20-3. to Good job. I believe that was without Matt Stafford, by the way. I believe you're right. So, 20 of 26, 228... Yards, one touchdown, not impressive at all. Yeah, I've no. seen Desmond Ritter do. Yeah, that that that's very that's very pedestrian numbers. Pedestrian. Then oh look, you lose to Minnesota. Now that their entire team is actually playing well, twenty four to ten, twenty four for forty one, two hundred twenty nine yards, one touchdown, one pick. Not great. Yeah, again, very pedestrian. Pedestrian. Then you lose to 
this is the most laughable one in my opinion. The Denver Broncos. The Broncos. The... 19 to 17, 21 of, to thir- of 31, 180. 180 for an elite quarterback? Is that really an elite yeah, number? Yeah, no, 180 <laughs> yards on the day? That That's it? Like, come on. This is the two, Broncos. This is the... Two touchdowns, one pick. Again, not great. And I may have spoken too soon because the very next week you lose to the Raiders, 17 <laughs> 13. I can I can I can I I I, 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 I can feel a disturbance in the force. Like every Packer fan in Wisconsin is currently simultaneously yelling out to me, Why are you doing this to us? Why are you doing this? 16 of 30, 182. Three interceptions, no touchdown. How do you do that against the fucking Raiders? Keep in mind, Easton Stick even had touchdowns against them. Yeah, Chargers were blowing out because the defense didn't give Guys, a fuck. Guys, those aren't even East- pedestrian East- numbers. East- those are even piss poor numbers. Those are piss poor numbers. Those are benchable numbers. Next up, you lose to the, to Detroit now that they kind of got their shit together from the last meeting. 34 of 20, 23 for 36, 246 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Again, not great. Not great. Then you win by a nipple hair to the New Orleans Saints, 18 of 17. New Orleans, mind you. When the Saints go marching into hell... 259, one touchdown, one interception. Oh, yeah, no, uh, another pedestrian game, guys. Guys, are, 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 you guys are, are you guys beginning to see the picture here, guys? Guys, on a good day, Jordan Love puts up pedestrian numbers. And here's the thing. This will make Kane laugh. 25 to 24, lost to Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. <laughs> I remember that. The Taylor game. Heineke, the Taylor Heineke led fucking team beat. Oh, yeah. No, like I said, guys, I I, I I can feel a disturbance in the cheese 25. force. Fourteen of twenty-five, one hundred fifty-one yards. Wow, whoop de doo! You had three touchdowns. You still didn't even throw for two hundred yards. That's not a good day. Yeah. Again, guys. And guys, here we go. We're we're not done. We're not done, Packers fans. If you thought we were done, oh no, there's more. There's more. Chicago Bears. You won thirty-eight to twenty. Good job. It's just Chicago though, so it's not that big of a deal. Fifteen of twenty-seven, two hundred forty-five yards, three touchdowns. Again, three touchdowns. Really cool. Two hundred forty-five yards. Not so much. Yeah, 245 yards is a very pedestrian number, guys. I'm sorry. I, how many times did we see Jordan Love break the 300-yard mark this se- the last season? Hey. Once? Uh, let me look here. Uh, you did, They did it against the Chargers and against the Bears week one. All the other times, he, was, he didn't even sniff 300 yards. Yeah, no. So, guys... Like, like, like I said, guys, uh, we do rag on Jordan Love here, and just know that it is warranted. It is warranted. I don't no. care what you Packer backers say. Every criticism we make of this kid is warranted. When your By generational way, quarterback his, on a I, good day is putting up pedestrian-like numbers. And just... Just for shits and gigs real quick, because I'm I'm curious, right? Because I've caught flack for saying Justin Herbert is better than uh, Jordan Love quite a few times now. Let's just look how many times Herbert had better numbers. Just this year, because he obviously would mop the floor with him if it was any other year. So, so against Miami... Probably one of his worst performances. But that was a shootout, and they had Austin Eckler. 
229 and a touchdown. But guess what? Week two against the Titans. 305 yards, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns, not great, but 300 yards. Against Minnesota, 405 and three touchdowns. I didn't hear him even sniff 400 yards, did you? Yeah, no, I certainly didn't. And here's the thing. Herbert didn't eclipse 300 yards after that, but he had a fucked up hand for most of the last year. Hey, keep him busy for a second. I gotta and look at the dogs. he didn't. All right. He didn't have Mike Williams. He didn't have a running game to help him. Whereas Jordan Love had all of those things and still barely did shit. Yeah, guys. Um, obviously, like like I said earlier, we criticize Jordan Love, but just know it's warranted. It's very very much and warranted get this. criticism. Get this: Chargers when they played Detroit, forty-one to thirty-eight loss. But guess what? Herbert threw for three hundred twenty-three yards and four touchdowns that game. Did you hear four touchdowns at all on Jordan Love's record? I think not. So, guys, just, just, so we just wanted to throw that out there out, for all you Packer backers or, that are still sucking Jordan Love's we, dick. You're sucking a mediocre quarterback's dick. You're sucking. At least when you were sucking off Rodgers, you at least had some leeway and argument to be made. Jordan Love, there's no argument right now. Yeah, whoop, again, whoop de doo You beat season. the Cowboys. Clap, clap, clap. But then as soon as you hit the Niners, yeah, you barely lost to him, but you still lost. Yeah, no. Like like I, I said, if, 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 if they had managed to beat the Niners, the maybe I'd have been a little bit more impressed. But just with the numbers that I saw, not impressed. So, guys, that is going to do it. I did you. want to bring up one more thing, Rob. Yeah, go for it. Um... I just wanted to bring up this real quick because obviously they talk about how great uh, Jordan Love was against the 49ers. Justin Herbert without basically his entire offense. He had Austin Eckler and I think his tight end for this game. No, 196 yards, one touchdown, one interception. But at least you can say for Justin Herbert, he didn't have his weapons out there. Jordan Love did better, but he also had his entire supporting cast when he played up. All right, guys. So that is going to close That's out the not... player spotlight. Absolutely. But, but yeah, guys. Uh, our our next segment is uh, we get we're getting to the personal segments, guys, which means we're getting near the end of the show, guys. But I've been hyping up this moment for you guys all show, guys. It's time to bring out Angie Kenny, guys. It's time for charged up. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start with the lesser of the two things that pissed me off. We're going to start with Tua and the Dolphins. Tua, you get this really good contract extension. Again, I don't think it's deserved. I think you're a health hazard at this point. But I'm going to put that aside for just a second. Your first day back to practice after getting your deal, after being a whiny little bitch and holding out for the first week is give me my money show me that money or whatever the fuck you said it was basically give me my goddamn money let me ask ask team this real quick because i need to make sure before i go completely off on this guy did joe burrow patrick mahomes justin herbert jalen hurts anybody like that say that when they got extended I can't recall anyone ever saying that other than maybe Dak Prescott saying, you know, show me the money. You, you want to know why they didn't? Because they're grown-ass men. Exactly. They're not little boys trying to dress up as a quarterback. They're not little boys still act like this is their childhood and they can just dress up and act like dickwads all the time. Tua, you're not better then Patrick Mahomes or Herbert, you shouldn't be paid more than them either, which you're not, to be fair. But to put this simply, you should not be getting all egotistical what? just because your worthless ass is being carried by Tyreek Hill, game in and game out, or Jalen Waddle, if 
Tyreek's not available. The point to a, to you getting your extension is because this brain dead front office actually thinks you're worth that, which you're not. You're not even close to worth that. If you look at your stats without Tyreek and Jalen, you look like at best a Taylor Heineke knockoff. At best. What I would have signed you to was another pro- fucking prove it deal and prove that you can stay fucking healthy and win a playoff game before I give you money. Now, people might say, well, Herbert got his money and he didn't. Well, he ha- also had Brandon Staley. You think Tua would have had a better record with Brandon Staley? Hey, hey, Tim, do you think Tua would have had a winning record with oh, Brandon Staley? Oh, absolutely not. Brandon Staley, as we have established, is a bumbling idiot who needs to be launched into the sun. <laughs> So, as much as you guys would like to talk shit about Herbert, last I checked, Herbert doesn't have to play defense. And he also doesn't make the scheme, let's play seven yards off of the wide receiver. Tua is basically being handed the situation that he's in on a silver fucking platter, where all he has to do is not be a moron and try to keep the ball out of harm's way. If Herbert or anybody else had those two weapons, guess what? They put up similar, if not better, numbers than Tua. Want to know why? Because unlike Tua, they know how to throw the ball and it's a little bit chilly. As soon as Tua gets into the playoffs, if he's not at home, he freezes quite literally. So, uh, you know, Tame, here, here's something else I wanted to mention. Tua in that playoff game that he actually played, one touchdown that entire game. One. Then he went by, by down by multiple scores. What did he do? Did he push the ball down the field? No. Do you recall him? You don't recall him pushing the ball no, down the no, field? No, no, unless I'm he remembering this game incorrectly. Down. He took his check downs down multiple scores in a playoff game. Out there looking a like win Tom or go home Brady. Game. 40's Except Tom not Brady. nearly as talented. Correction, correction. Yeah, 40s Tom Brady. Let's make that clear. The last season of his career, Tom Brady. Not prime Tom Brady. Yeah, no, not not prime Tom um, Brady. Far from it. Justin Herbert, let's see. He lost 31-30 to against Jacksonville. Last I checked, because, again, Brandon Staley doesn't know how to call a defense. And they decided running the football would be better with Austin Eckler, who was not running well at all that game. Tua did not push the ball down the field. At least when Herbert was making, trying to make throws late and get it, trying to keep the lead in their favor, he was chucking it down the field and trying to get a big play. I didn't see that from Tua once. And you know what? Benjamin Brand puts it perfectly. And I think you know which one I'm going to reference, but I'm going to say it anyways. Tua would be an AI-generated quarterback, but at least AI would learn something. Yeah. Yeah. Tua learns nothing. Nothing at all. He learns how to do different things, so he's either leaner or a bulky or whatever the fuck he wants to do, but he doesn't work on actually playing better. Why? Because he could just say, fuck it, Tyreek's down there somewhere. Yeah. No, if he, he didn't have Tyreek Hill, he would not be paid and he probably would still be behind ryan fitzpatrick on that roster wait he's still playing so ryan fitzpatrick's retired but you know to say he would have been behind him up until he retired <clears throat> but with with that being said i'm gonna move on from tua because everyone knows how i feel about tua it's been well established you know what hasn't been well established? Why I hate the Cowboys. I'm going to take a drink real quick. Um, Tim, you can talk to him for a second while I take a drink and make guys, sure I got uh, my thoughts yeah, in order guys, here. Uh, Kenny's, Kenny's got to sip something just to uh, make sure he doesn't completely let loose on uh, all of you poor unfortunate souls who are listening to us right now, uh, listening to our incoherent, incoherent rambling. And guys... Um, I do also want to throw this out, guys. Uh, thank you to all of you who are still supporting this show. Um, again, guys, I know the shows haven't been real, real in depth, but we're in the we're in the middle of the off season, guys. 
Um, once the season starts up, we will have more, a lot more in-depth talks to talk to talk about. Um, but guys, we we did want to bring you an episode today. But uh, I'm again, guys. We're get get ready because Kenny's about to let loose. Cowboys fans, I want you to lean a little bit closer. Are you no, no, are you no, leaning come closer? Come here, come here. Look, look closer. Come Good. here. Come here. Micah Parsons is not elite in the playoffs. Record. Micah scratch. Parsons is elite <gasps> in the regular. But as soon as he gets to the playoffs, just like Tua, just like Dak, he freezes up every time. How do how do I back this up? You might be asking yourselves. Let, let me let me back it up for you real quick, because I I don't think most of you understand just how bad he's been in postseason football. So let, let me just real quick, you know, let me you know let me let me just give you my proof real quick, because I feel like this is a this is a pretty good point to make. Micah Parsons in the playoffs in four playoff games. Has a total of 18 tackles, one sack. One. Does that sound like an elite player in the playoffs to you, Tam? Definitely not. I mean, the 18 tackles is definitely a decent number, but one sack? Come on, dude. You're supposed to be an absolute shit wrecker. Keep in mind, 18 tackles in four games. Not elite. That's not elite at all. You want to hear another stat line? And I'm going to let Tane guess who this is because I honestly think people will not know who this is if they don't know who this man is specifically. Um, hold on. I had it pulled up in, a, in another tab, but I got to make sure to type in the second part. Okay, so here's the postseason stats of a player in just one game in the playoffs. He had he had three tackles, one sack, but that's with the Chargers specifically, and his career numbers are higher. But in terms of last year, he actually, I think, had four total tackles and a sack. I'm going to go back, back to Parsons here in a second, but who does that sound like to you if I add in the fact that they had 22 combined uh, tackles. It sounds like Bosa or Mack. It sounds like Bosa. It would be Cleo Mack. Micah Parsons in one game, two two tackles, zero sacks. I'm comparing their last their last start to each other. And they have, they're both low, but keep in mind it's also the playoffs. So it's a little bit harder to get those type of things. But... Would you rather have the stat, the stat Khalil Mack has, or Parsons had? If you had, to oh, pick I'm definitely player? looking for my players to pull up the pull up the Khalil Mack stat line there. Exactly, it may not be much better than Parsons last game, but it's still there. And keep in mind, the Chargers also had to cycle him in and out because that year Mack did have an injury earlier, and so they had to limit him in that playoff game. Parsons was not limited in his. Elite numbers by elite players in the playoffs versus non-elite players in the playoffs. Now, let me make sure I say this nice and slow for you Cowboys fans, because I know your brains don't function as fast as everyone else's. Micah Parsons is a great player in the regular season. In the playoffs, he's dog shit. Now, that's enough about Parsons. I think I bullied him enough. Um, Let's talk about your coach for a second. Mike McCarthy. Tim is very well versed in how Mike McCarthy is. He, he, he played his team quite a lot, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. I um, definitely have uh, have seasons of experience against playing against Mike McCarthy and uh, the McCarthyisms, as I like to call them. Mike McCarthy is not a great coach. No, he is not. Let me not. explain to you why he's not a coach. Let me explain to you Cowboys fans why he's not a good coach. For one, he relies way too heavily on his quarterback carrying. It happened in Green Bay, and now it's happening on Dallas. Now, let me make sure you delusional fans don't think this in too high regard. 
He's not Aaron Rodgers, and he will never be Aaron Rodgers. If I might make an interjection here. In his prime. If, if I might yeah. make an interjection here, guys. Mike McCarthy is literally just the modern-day John Fox. Oh, hold on, what was that? Mike McCarthy is literally just the modern-day John Fox. Exactly. You, his clock management, at best, is okay, but most of the time, it's god-awful. His play calling late in games are also awful. Who can remember, who remembers when he thought, let's put Ezekiel Elliott as a center? Oh, God. Who the fuck thought of that? Probably him, because he's a fucking idiot. And here's the thing. I'll give you guys credit. C.D. Lamb, and I think Tame can agree with me, C.D. Lamb is a fucking beast. Oh, C.D. Lamb's a hell of a player. Too bad he's trapped on this shithole team that won't go anywhere, though. Yeah. CD Lamb would be, I guarantee you, would be much happier anywhere other than Dallas. He won't say it publicly, but we all fucking know it. Because guess what? What Dak can do with CD, almost any other quarterback in the NFL could do with CD. Imagine CD with Justin Fields. Imagine CD with Justin Herbert. Imagine CD with fucking Kirk Cousins. He will put up the same, if not better, stat lines with those guys than with that. Especially someone like Fields. If Fields had him and DJ, he would never left Chicago. Oh, absolutely. Also, I'm all gonna give you guys credit. You have a great secondary. You have Trayvon Diggs. You have Deron Bland. Problem is, with Trayvon specifically, very good at picking off the football, but also very good at turning into burnt fucking bread anytime he's anywhere near an elite receiver. He is literally Eli Apple against great receivers and prime whoever the best cornerback in the league right now is against mediocre ones. The Cowboys largely have this weird idea that their best defense against anything is bringing up the Super Bowl they got to and won back in 1996. Hey, Tim, you want to know something interesting about that Super Bowl? Yeah, that happened before I was even born. And before I was born, too. Isn't that crazy? I know. Wild, right? So, yes, you guys made a Super Bowl and won one. But considering, considering I wasn't, I wasn't alive when that happened, happened, I don't give a shit about that Super Bowl. You know, sometimes what when I'm depressed, I go, I go to Cowboys meetings and congratulate them on uh, their on their five playoff wins in the last in the last thirty years, and then I smile when they say they only have four. Let me actually. That reminds me too. Um, I'm gonna look at playoff records since 2000 for the Cowboys. Four wins for the Cowboys. The furthest they got, I'm pretty sure, was the division round, if I remember correctly. Oh, by the way, Dez didn't fucking catch it. While we're talking about that, Dez didn't catch it. Just while we're on the topic of the Don't Cowboys, get... real quick. Let me just insult you some while more. While we're on the topic of the Cowboys sucking dick in the playoffs, he didn't catch it. Now, that... Look, Let's look at my Chargers real quick. Let's see how many how many playoff wins they've had since 2000. Let's see. Oh, look, five. Already more than the Cowboys. Now, I, let me make sure I heard you correctly and I'm reading this correctly. Pretty sure five is higher than four. Yeah, last I checked. Am I right? Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty pretty sure. Like, like I said, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that's how math works. Oh, let's look at your, your previous team, the Bears. They have three wins, but they also don't have coaches that are really smart 95% of the time. They imagine also don't normally have just, a quarterback. Be, imagine being just slightly better than the Bears. Just. Oh, wait, here we go. Here's another one. Let's look at your current team, team. Let's see how the Texans have done in the playoffs in the past, since 2000, which they weren't even around in 2000. It was 2002 when they became a thing. Um... Oh, look, five playoff wins by a team that hasn't even been around for a third of how long you guys have been around for. For real. Wild. 
Oh, and you know what the most recent ones were? CJ Stroud leading the team to a win. My God, dude, we're going to get so much fucking flack for this episode. (laughs) Oh, look, they also had a win in 2019. I'm pretty sure that was Deshaun Watson, if I remember correctly. Yep. 2016. Was that Case Keenum? I think it was. I'm pretty sure that was Case Keenum. Hold on, let me let me check who that was. Let me see who who was their starter? Brock Osweiler and Tom Savage. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's worse than we thought. That's... <laughs> the excuse me the fuck? Kind of crazy, man. I mean, holy shit. Hold on, 2012. Who was their who was their quarterback in 2012? Now I kind of have to figure this out. Who was their quarterback in 2012? Because that might be when when it was Case Keenum. Matt Schaub. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, Cowboys fans, guess what? Matt Schaub once led his team to a 12 and four record. Isn't that crazy? Oh, my God. That's dude. wild. Dude, we're going to get so much flack for this episode. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. As soon as they're done fucking off Dak and actually look at the quarterbacks that have won playoff games, they'll be like, oh, shit. Dak's not actually that elite. <laughs> Only in the play- in the playoffs, he's a fucking dog shit. But wait, Tom Savage won a playoff game? Wait, Brock Osweiler might have? Holy shit, Tom Savage did? Holy crap, Matt Schaub? <laughs> what the fuck? Well, guys, now that we are on the topic of Houston Texans, um, I think it's a perfect it's a perfect moment to transition into uh, my segment, guys. Welcome in to the Houston Huddle. Nope, wrong slide. No, 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 no. I'm not done yet. Houston, we have a problem. No? I'm not finished. I have one more thing to say. And then you can go. I will stand by this until the end of time. I will take any Chargers quarterback, Sands Ryan Leaf. I know one of y'all would have said that. I'm not playing that game with you. I'll take any Chargers quarterback over the last 20 years over anyone the Cowboys have had in history. And they are better than anybody that you can put in front of them. Yes, that includes Herbert. Ooh. With that being said, Cowboys, you're fucking trash. Deal with it. You belong in the fucking dump, just like your, all the VHS tapes with your last fucking relevance on it. Bye bye <laughs> All right, guys. That was Angie Kenny. Welcome into the Houston Huddle now. now it's Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Guys, I'm actually going to take my segment to talk about, not the Houston Texans, guys, but I want to talk about the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers here. Because, guys, a lot of you just, a lot of you may know, I just moved from Chicago to Wisconsin, and boy, do I hate it here. Um, First off, let me just say, for y'all in Wisconsin, there is literally jack shit up here other than the Wisconsin Dells. Like, I'll tell you that right now. Everything is in the Wisconsin Dells, and nothing is anywhere else. But, um, guys, I wanted to talk about the Chicago Bears, first off, because they are... By far one of the most delusional fan bases in the NFL. And I, I, I speak from experience, guys, because I myself was very delusional just a season ago, thinking that the Bears might have been actually good. And I, I, I it, it, it takes a strong man to admit when he was wrong, but I was wrong. Okay, guys? I was I was wrong. The Bears were not very good. They, they were very mid at best and bad most, de- most of the time. I was wrong. Guys, when I tell you that your team is probably going to continue to be just as bad as before, if not worse. Guys, I, 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 it's coming from a genuine place of concern. Bears fans, I do not hate you guys. You guys are still my brothers. I still love all of you. But 
Guys, stop with the delusional talk of every year of, oh, this quarterback is going to break the curse. Oh, this quarterback is going to be generational. Oh, this quarterback's going to be this. Oh, this quarterback's going to be that. Guys, just stop. Just stop. Like, guys, I love you, and that's why I'm telling you to stop. With the with the with the with the with the quick accusations and saying that every new quarterback you draft is gonna break the curse because guys until it happens I don't see it happening. And, 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 and like I said, guys, it breaks my heart that I have to come out. Can I, I have to come at you guys like this because I love you guys. I really do. Bears fans, you are probably some of the most lovable fans in the NFL. Well, partially due to your team being very bad for the last 30 years, but that's besides the point. Guys, you, you guys just talk so much big at the end of the year, at the, at the beginning of every year, and then at the end of the year, you guys are, have, are left with absolutely fucking nothing to say. So please, just say nothing until you actually have something to say. Now, as for the Packer fans, it goes the other way. I am now surrounded by you motherfuckers, and I and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not very happy about it, right? I still don't very I still don't very much like you guys. Mostly due to personal reasoning. But that's besides the point. Guys, 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 you you guys need to stop talking talking like, oh, we're, we're probably gonna start slow. No, you guys you guys are probably gonna be mid. Guys are gonna be mid. Just accept it. You're a mid-ass team that barely scraped into the playoffs last season because you're you're fucking mid. Just just accept it, Packers fans. There's nothing wrong with being mid. Okay, that's kind of where you have to go now that the Aaron Rodgers era is over. You're going to be mid. Accept it. That's why we did the dissection on Jordan Love. I don't need to dive into it very de- very in depth, guys, because we did that earlier on an earlier segment of the show, guys. But again. I, I see two fan bases, one which I love, one which I hate, and both of them, are just, oh, I, hate, I, I, I just see them both as full of idiots, and that's coming from me, who's a pretty big idiot himself, so, um, yeah, y'all need to clean up your act. That's coming, from him. that's coming from him, who's been a Chicago fan basically all his life until now. He was one of you idiots, too. Yeah, I was one but- of you idiots. But he decided to finally open his eyes and be like, this shit is never going to work. I can change teams? The fuck you mean? It was once said that somebody's like, I changed my team. And Tim's like, wait, what? Wait, what? You can do that? I can do that? You can do that? Oh, then I'm out of here. Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. I'm out. But yeah, guys, that's and, all I really wanted to use my segment for was to touch on the two fan bases that I am surrounded by that are constantly at war. Because again, I've been I've been around Chicago fans all my life, and now I am spending a large portion of my life around Green Bay fans, and I don't like either of them very much anymore. I don't like. Them. Point something out real quick. Tame did not immediately jump to the Texans. He took weeks to figure out who he wanted to go to. I wanted to make that clear for those that might you know, call guys, him a bandwagon it, it, it was a very, very long journey for me to figure out what, 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 what team is actually going to be my favorite since I can actually pick a favorite <laughs> and I don't have to be born into a favorite team. Like, I put thought into this, guys. <laughs> like, guys, we can even go back to the first few episodes of this show. I did not have a personal segment because I was still choosing But guys, exactly. that his personal segment was being mad about Justin Fields being traded. That was what his personal segment was. It essentially was. Not because, he's a Bears fan, not because he was a Bears fan at the time, but because he's a Jordan uh, or Justin Fields fan. Very much a Justin Fields fan and very much a CJ Stroud fan now. But um, guys, that's all I really wanted to touch on from my segment. Just the two, the two fan bases that I'm constantly, constantly being surrounded by being at war with each other. But guys, that brings us to our closing segment, guys. The segment that the show is named after. Welcome to the fuck up of the week. It was at this moment that he knew. Tim and I had to look into the things here, you know, and right before we actually started, because we did not have the fuck up of the week before we booted up. 
Guys, we really didn't, and guys, you I, took I, us I, a little bit. We we and guys again. We 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 are trying to stay away from Caleb Williams because we 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 have we we feel like we've kind of ragged on the kid enough, and there's no need for us to just give him fuck up of the week for just existing. But just know yeah, that Caleb, you again clear. dodged the you, bullet today. You again dodged the bullet. In back to back weeks, we would have had him be fuck up of the week. I had him there right now because it's like, well, surely nobody's gonna make it to where we can't choose him. Boy, was I fucking wrong. Like, <laughs> I was like, it's going to be awesome, right? Like, there's like, no, there's no way. There's no board. way someone, like, there's Ends no up, way someone's going to top it for this week, right? <laughs> uh, he Matrix dodged that shit last second. Literally last second. Because Aaron Brown, a 23-year-old of Winchester, Illinois, had decided to threaten to shoot and potentially kill Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Chris Jones. My guy, what are you doing? And guys, another brief point point I want to brush on. This was not the only threats made to the Kansas City Chiefs. This fuck-up of the week is awarded to all of you idiots who think it's okay to issue life-threatening anything towards any, towards anyone, not just NFL players, towards anyone. What, 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 why? Let me make this clear. Why? I don't like, or I don't like Patrick Mahomes. He's in my division. I don't like Travis Kelsey. He's pretty cool other than when he plays us. And I don't like Chris Jones. Again, they're all three probably pretty cool off the field. I hate playing them though. But I would never threaten to shoot anybody player or otherwise. I don't care how much I don't like you. Listen, guys, I'm not I, gonna I, threaten I, I, I don't I, I don't like the Kansas City Chiefs as much as the next guy. But I'm not gonna threaten to shoot Patrick Mahomes. Keep in mind too, guys, I'm pretty sure Patrick Mahomes is probably more well protected than Donald Trump was during that attempted shooting. Yeah, realistically he probably was. Like, let's be honest. Like, let's just be but real here for a second. Thing. Now, I do want to highlight something we might go over next time we boot up, depending on when that is. We don't normally do these, but I feel like we should preface a few things we might be doing. Obviously, if it's just before week one, we are going to do our week one predictions. Yes. It'll be our first predictions that we do on the show. We will also be going over, as of now, unless plans change, we will be going over the top 25 players of the 21st century. We were about to do that today, and then last minute we switched it out with the top 100 players since it's more relevant to the current uh, time frame. And again, guys, like, but we didn't want to do both of those on this show because, again, guys, we're already at 2 hours and 45 minutes about. We're, 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 we're just scraping under 3 hours right now. So just wanted to let you guys know, as of now, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the plan for next time we boot up. That might change, but I wanted to preface what we might be doing next week just so you guys might be a little more prepared for it. But yeah, guys, that is uh, that is our show for you guys this week, guys. Uh, uh, guys, I do want to, again, apologize because I know I, I know last episode during the College Football 25 special that uh, we would have a third member joining us. I, guys, I, I ain't been able to get a hold of him all morning. But, uh, guys, just know that we do have a third member coming to the show. And uh, we will be having a third personal segment towards the end of the show. Um, again, we're, we're, it, it's sort of just an, as an attempt from us to give you guys just, just that much more content when we come and do see you guys. Uh, just, you know, just get a third person's perspective. Uh, because I, 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 I'm sure you guys are getting very tired of just hearing me and Kenny's incoherent rambling. <laughs> but, um, guys... That is going to do us for the Helmet Haven Football Fuck-Up Show, Episode 7, Fifth Down Conversions. Kenny, do you have any closing thoughts to give us? Uh, nope, other, uh, other than one thing I forgot to mention. Um, guys, for those of you that don't know, obviously Madden comes out later this week, this month. I believe in about 12 days. Uh, I think it's even access. less than that. I think um, I think I think if you uh, pre-ordered and you got the three days early access, I think it's like less than a week. Yeah, less than a week for those that pre-ordered. About twelve days for those that didn't. Um, I do want to make sure I pitch this out there. 
Obviously, Tane mentioned the uh, college football, and he's been streaming that. We will have segments based on that that will also lead into Madden. So yes, guys, but we, we, we're, we're trying to save those for a th- very special 30-second timeout, guys. We're going to basically do our own draft reports, guys. We've been recording our own collegiate stats. Because, again, guys, if we're going to have a show where we talk about football, we had best shown that we can play football. But yeah, that's about all All other than the obvious. Thank you guys all for watching yet again. Much like Tame said earlier, we in, we love the fact that you guys continue to support the show, even though we've had some hiatuses. Um, obviously, hopefully, next time we boot up, the technical issues will be solved, and we will be booting up weekly. Yeah, hopefully we won't have as any as uh, technical hitches next time. But again, guys, um, again, guys, like I said, once the NFL season officially rolls around, which it, it's very close, guys, it's very close, we will be going back to the weekly episodes. So you guys will be getting an episode every Tuesday or Wednesday uh, where we'll be doing our predictions, our our discussions on on, on every week. And uh, guys... That's why we. That's why during this during the off season, guys, we do want just occasionally bring you guys nice, fun episodes like we did today. And uh, Miss Triggs, I see you. You've been chilling in the chat, listening to our uh, rambling. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for supporting our show. This is something that Kenny and I very much enjoy doing. And guys, if you guys have anyone that you know might be interested in listening to our incoherent rambling about football, because sports, um, please, please send them our way. Uh, we don't know when our next episode will be, um, but it will probably be right around the kickoff of the preseason. Um, I might try to sneak in a little bit of a like a special stream when uh, I do my fantasy draft, um, but uh, that that's still up in the air and that's yet to be seen. But guys, it won't. yeah, be a, it, it probably won't be a kickoff to preseason because we're basically already there. Um, kick off the preseason is actually this Thursday. So we already kind of did the episode. Well, yeah, that. basically, but I think the next I, I, time will be I, I, I misspoke, guys. Kick off to the regular season, I in should about say. Two weeks. Yeah, kick off. To the... So yeah, kick off to the regular season. I I, I misspoke, guys. But uh, guys, thank you again for tuning in, guys. We yeah, will see you the guys the in the preseason. A... What's up? Huh? What'd you say? Oh, I was just saying that I was just re uh, re saying that it would be probably right before the kickoff is when we'll probably be uh, yeah, jumping yeah. in. So, so guys, yeah, again, we're we're only a few for weeks that. out from our next episode. So guys, again, we will see you guys again very soon. And again, we do apologize for the hiatuses, but it's been the off season, guys. We got to take a break every once in a while. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed our show today. We have done just under three hours, guys. You guys listen to us talk about football for three hours, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Guys, we'll see you guys in a few weeks, guys. We're outie. Thanks for tuning in to the Helmet Haven Football Fuck Up Show, guys. Yeah. yeah. Then Kenny, don't go nowhere. Uh, just stay safe. Just hang tight. Got the haters going ghost like they Patrick Swayze. I've been talking real shit. Y'all been talking crazy. I've been on some new shit. Y'all been acting lazy. I've been it, so my words are gonna make you float. I'm like dry as mixed with alcohol in the boat. Or below zero winter, go and grab a coat. What else can I say? The kid is just too cold. Never told a fib, was born just too bold. Never had to fold, but did break the mold. And as the story's told, if you didn't know, I'm running up the scope. This is DMO. Can you hear me? The summer been mines, man, they better fear me. They need glasses, they can't see it clearly. I don't chase the money, it just like to come near me. Yearly, truly, my life is a movie. Took her on a date once, now she trying to groove me. I'm really that guy, they gon' have to sue me. Then had the juice, time to mix it like a smoothie. Groovy, they asked me how I get up, I told them had to start down. Found me some real ones, now I got a crew now. Met a loyal girl four years later, that's my boo wow. And now I'm out here giving new sounds like boom pow.